Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Proving Grounds. We're in this week, Proving Grounds number 23, which sounds unreal. I am Splatoon Lily, and I'm joined here by the one, the only, the legendary K-Bot. <laughs> Hi, guys. What are you doing? <laughs> it's, uh, uh, it's another day in the office for us. Sitting here on a Friday night, about to watch some fantastic Splatoon. Uh, and by the way, you, you folk to a chat, you are not getting serious, Kbot tonight. Okay, I am. It was nap time about three hours ago. Um, is is the state I'm currently at? So we're gonna we're gonna have a good time with this one, Lily. We're gonna have a good one here. Yeah, we're gonna have a great time. <laughs> I, I think it's gonna be fantastic, honestly. <laughs> I, I, I see nothing going wrong here. Everything is fine. Nobody's tired and KBOT is full of energy. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna do great. We're gonna do great. We're gonna do great. <laughs> it's gonna be great. There will be no problem. It'll be an ASMR stream, just like the good old days. Isn't that right, Lily? Yeah, I put all of my energy into that intro, uh, trying to pull a little pop oh. in there. So like I'm tapped out right. now. <laughs> okay. Well Yeah. This will this will be great. Yeah. Table to some more. Yes, yes. Elevated yeah. potato. This is. We used to do this all of the time. Cave out, Lily ASMR, right? Yeah. It looks like first off, important. we're gonna be seeing free glue gunner, and heaven's latte, um, both pickups, semi pickups that involve uh, players that we've seen before. There's some some familiar names in here like Pincher, Tyuster. And, Fifth Gen and FM Candy, you know, some names that have been around for a little bit. Yep, they sure have. <laughs> I, uh, look, <laughs> you know I don't pay attention. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That you are, Lily, I hope you're not expecting me to, like, actually give you relevant conversation throughout no. the entire night. This is how That's it's going I'm to be here. the entire night. Right. <laughs> okay, I'm just I'm just making sure we set our expectations right for the night. Okay, that's My expectations, that's, that's a very important part. Uh, I expect you to get uh, angry at least one joke that I tell. Uh, that's pretty much what I expect. <laughs> that's that's a that's a good that's yeah that's yeah. gonna happen. That's pretty much all I expect. <laughs> I'm also looking at chat, and someone asked, "What is that logo for Free Glue Gunner?" Looks like that's a moose gun. Yeah, I, I can't tell. Elemental, like I hope we get. Kong? I don't know, man. <laughs> I hope we get a uh, uh, a higher resolution version so that we can throw on the screen very sloppily for game two. Thank you. Um, yeah, uh, I'm sure I'm sure he'll be working on that. Um, <laughs> Elemental is on production tonight, folks. So, uh, as you can tell, I'm in a silly, goofy mood. Lily always makes me in an even more silly goofy mood. And Elemental is our producer, which who is always in a silly goofy mood. Um, so we're gonna have some fun for the first half of this broadcast. And uh, and you all are along for the ride. And so yeah, am I for that matter. Things will get serious later. Oh dear goodness. <laughs> Bonus glue gunner. Start each game with one free glue gunner. Is this balloons? Yeah, Monkey this is tower. balloons. This is balloons. <laughs> Oh, it's Balloons Tower Defense, right? Ash, I don't know. Because <laughs> there are balloons and there are monkeys, and it kind sure. of looks like like the top looks like the same UI that it would be for balloons. Sure. Nice. There you go. Now you know, chat. See, very, <laughs> very instructive. Uh, we have now established what the logo is instead of just a collection of... Uh, whatever color smudges actually you know what it looks like at the top corner that's what it looks like at all times if i took my glasses off and was <laughs> trying to operate uh-huh like if i take my glasses off right now on the screen what you what i can see with my glasses on for that little logo is about what it looks like for the screen in front of my face with my glasses off Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> i i just thought it was an ms paint meme with monkeys but you know I'm, like maybe a donkey well that too 
but apparently it's an MS paint meme with monkeys about Bloons Tower Defense. Mm, which is a game I've never heard of. I think I'm old. You've What's... never heard of this game? No. <laughs> it's been around for a while. This is not a new yeah. game. Oh Bloons. Oh, there's six of them? Man, this has been around a while. Yeah. First release, March of 2007, Lily. Wow. You cannot pull the old card on me. I can. I was in high school then. Why would I play this weird TV game? Pop Gun played it in college. No, oh, well. Dang. I guess I'm yeah. just out of touch. I don't know. What was I doing in 2007? Uh... Probably playing Diablo 2, honestly. <laughs> Sounds like a thing a nerd would do. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Getting oh into things. It looks like, I mean, interesting picks. We have a bow in here. I'm not usually seen that often. Pencil, which is a little behind the meta. I heard from Jared's Twitter three or four weeks ago that it was dead already. So, you know, the move, meta moves fast when you follow top of the Twitter. Um, uh, the meta moves fast in general, uh, <laughs> and, and, and the composition in theory wants to move even faster for free glue in our gear. Um, and really for both sides. I mean, Kevin's lost it, of course. Uh, with, if you're picking that pencil, you're going to want to be a little bit more aggressive. You're going to want to be up in the face. But of course, this Latana on the other side is also going to do that much the same with the zip cast. And we see that played out here in the first little part of our game. Crab coming on the front side, probably out of uh, fear more than anything else. Not a terribly great position, but we'll run it, we'll run it. It looks like fifth gen and Vincent Pincher about to trade here. And uh, things falling up. Free Glue Gunner still holding onto that zone and onto that. And now getting pretty convincing. We we'll want to see if any Bosley can take advantage of these specials coming out on top of the zone and hopefully get a cap. Okay. Are getting word that the colors need switching, so we'll be working on that in a moment. But... Cap does come through here for Heaven's Latte, and so we're picking up the Tacticooler and rolling on forward here. Although Free Blue Gun are not able to take as much space forward as I'd like to really see out of them. Now this Crab Tank is immediately going to get jumped on. You see it, the target of both the Zipcast and the Trizuka in, in instantaneously. It feels like the position collapses here, although Heaven's Latte also not really taking advantage and pushing into the zone. Three Blue Gunner looking like they might be able to hold on here, and indeed looking to be the case for now. Cooler out on the right side of the zone. Two down situations. The rest of the members of Heaven's Latte couldn't sweep back through the defenses, and now suddenly Free Blue Gunner in the position for a knockout cube. I have those all not completely out of the game. They probably have one more chance here to get back in, but the members of Free Blue Gun are up on their plaza It's going to make that incredibly difficult. Uh, we're counting down until the 10 tick mark, and things are getting a little dicey here. Is it cast right? That's not going to be painting much of the zone, so we'll have to see if they can get this cap the last second, but with that recall, not much you can do about it. Not much you could do there at all. Free Glue Gun are able to take that. Look, uh, so much, so much of this game in general is about trying to work with your team to actually execute a plan, right? And it felt like, for all intents and purposes, uh, the defensive position wasn't really that strong from Free Glue Gunner, but an engagement didn't fully come through after they took care of the crab on top mid from Heaven's Latte. So... They kind of just started running into fights 1v1 after that kind of engagement was made when a lot of those specials were popped. And then they ended up not coming away victorious in a lot of those 1v1s, allowing Free Glue Gunner to maintain control of the zone and ultimately take the game there at the very end. So really want to see more of that kind of synergy, more of that kind of teamwork. What happens after we take our specials and we take one target down? Where do we go next? And how do we sweep through the map as a result to actually convert the zone back to our color? I mean, that gets all the more difficult too. Things like recall specials, especially why they're uh, not quite as popular on, on things like zones because if you pop that too far away from the zone, by the time you have exhausted your special and recalls, you still have to get back to the zone to be relevant. And when you're down to one tick. 
sure. <laughs> but I argue that a recall special can still be used just fine if also used or escorted by the other members who are not in specials. No, for sure. Right? For Especially sure. look at that, you know, once that Zuka goes out, now you've just got a splatter shot. Let that splatter shot walk right up to wherever the zip caster was, because now the person that was looking at what the position or the angle they were trying to hold is now going to be able to be breached. So start walking in there, start getting a little bit more aggressive. We'll see if Heaven's Latte can do that. But instead, Lily, I see a weapon that you are very happy is Yeah, I was about to tell you. Nowadays. I was about to yeah, tell you, yeah. you can stop talking now because there's a junior right. on my screen. Um, at two. Fan kid time. Yeah, I just, I just, ma'am, like, hello, yeah. my darling, my mm -hmm. precious. We are backing off a little bit. I'm not, come on, battle junior it out. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> but unfortunate baby bubble getting popped. Maybe gonna get a pick here with the sword's help. And uh, that tower is moving, but isn't gonna get very far here. They may have that ink jet out, but I feel like they're gonna clear first check and then have to drop it with pressure coming in from the side. Appears to be the case to see the Zipcaster and the Zuka both hot, escorting folks in. But again, can they establish this space on forward? Because Free Blue Gunner is running right back up to this checkpoint. Now Zuka in position, finds one with the main weapon, finds a second with the special, and this push will collapse just as fast, or uh, even faster actually, as the push back the other direction. But Lily, let's take a step back for a moment and walk me through, why is this, oh, okay, besides you, because you always play the Jupiter, why is the junior actually getting played? Like, what? what is it about this bubbler? Because it's still just two Zuka shots that it's down, right? Absolutely, but those are two Zuka shots that aren't going into your teammates. It's one of those things that just adds a little bit of longevity. It can tank those Zuka shots and, and allow a bit of protection for your teammates when otherwise you might go down in a quad, right? So it just gives a bit of safe space, especially when combined with say, something like Inkjet. It gives a bit of safe space to, to stand in while those specials burn out. We'll see it probably get used actually to get up that street a little bit more and now trying to look for the re-engagement here is Heaven's Latte, but actually Free Blue Gunner able to take care of business for now. They looked like they had a pretty good hold until the left side of the map was breached and they went three down. Fifth gen, the last one up here. It's gonna dodge roll around, be a little pesky, and well exit on a trade. So Heaven's Latte might have an opportunity here, but again, have to get those specials built up and then how are they going to engage, especially given by the fact that they've got uh, this bubbler, uh, which may not be as impactful of a special as they were. Unfortunately, not at that moment, but we'll have to see how it progresses. It's uh, it's one of those specials that just can be very nice to hold your ground, and, and if it can allow you to do so, can allow you to not have to give up those power positions that you might be trying to hold on to. It looks like Heaven's Lante is having a little bit more trouble getting in, though. Uh, more so, they can hold all the ground they like, but if they can't move up, then that ground may not be as valuable, right? So, unfortunately, I'm dodging those Zookas somehow. My dodging doesn't work like that, but <laughs> he's gonna try to chase a few more kills with this inkjet, and somehow gets none. I'm... Blob is defying all expectations right now. <laughs> And you know, sometimes the tune is all about a game, about <laughs> defying expectations. Mm -hmm. uh, you see the dive here, beautifully done here from Heaven's Latte, uh, actually trying to target a lot of these individual members, swarming them to make it force the 1v3 situation and force these members to go down. And now might start to have a push of their own. We'll see KM go forward. Here's the big bubbler that comes out, buying some space around this street and holding this corner for a little while. Meanwhile, though, looks like the first checkpoint was actually uh, infiltrated from the side here as one of the members came up, uh, prevented that first checkpoint from getting taken right away. And so uh, now even some more special resources have been exhausted from Heaven's Latte. They still don't have the tools they really want to keep a push rolling. And they really don't. It, it looks like every time they try to get something moving, they're just running into more and more problems. And I... <laughs> It can be difficult to keep up that kind of momentum when you keep running into walls, right? So, I, again, three down, have let's say a full wipe out, actually, as I say that. And Free Blue Gunner is going to be able to come back in. I mean, they have, what, one checkpoint left? They don't even really need to push for points. They could just sit here in mid and make Heaven's Latte feed into them. Because, what, what do they need to push for? 
not much at the moment right now. We see Pinscher trying to get something done on the front lines here. Now pops the Zuka to secure one, but <laughs> only one goes down. Now it's a second, now on the back lines, and now all of a sudden it is a three down situation. So finally we might be able to see something come forward here, but Evans Lante still need more tools at their disposal. You see the killer whale about to come out, and now actually no, it immediately gets taken off the tower thanks to the inkjet from above, and a scramble is made from Heaven's Latte to try to come on back in, keep this tower rolling forward and over time, and it looks like there's gonna be successful in doing so. Bubbler out now, here comes the checkpoint coming through, but in a moment this bubbler will go down, fifth gen dives right on top of the tower, but it's a little bit too early, there's enough members around to handle it, couldn't find anything surprising, and now finally the crossfire is set up to secure the tower at the end of the game for free glue gutter. Just when you think it might have gone the other way, people hold their positions, set up a beautiful crossfire defense on top of the tower, and even win the 2v3 on that very objective in order to secure the game 2 victory. That was almost a throw. Almost. So close. But it wasn't. But it wasn't. That's it. It wasn't. It did probably get their hearts pounding faster than, I mean, our voices are right now. We're trying to keep this yeah. ASMR hour all calm, no stress. Um, but Free Glue Gunner's probably feeling a little bit of adrenaline right now. A little bit. A little bit. And that was, that was just round one. Yeah. That was, that was just round one as we take a yeah. look here. Okay, I'm sorry, that was round two. My bad. <laughs> My bad. I'm spreading misinformation on the internet. Uh, uh, do you think people folks, do that? Go on the internet and lie? Me? Yes, all the time. Uh, we have 22, 21 teams registered tonight. 18 teams, I believe, are participating. And so we have a double elimination bracket all the way through. Those of you, of course, that advance the tournament series know that recently a lot of the tournaments have been single elimination into a top four double elimination cut. But instead, it's just straight deal double elim all the way through tonight. No funny or fancy business, and every team is going to have uh, two opportunities here. So Heaven's Latte still has a chance to come on back through the loser side of the bracket here, um, and and we'll see what they're made of as as the day continues to progress here. I I mean, probably some carbon, some water. Uh huh. I'm sure there's other stuff, yep. like proteins and cells and stardust, uh -huh. I guess. Yep. Sure are. <laughs> Hopes You're and so dreams right. and something. something. Hopes something. and dreams. That's the name of a song from Undertale or something. <laughs> 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 With spooky season, gotta talk about skeletons. <laughs> <laughs> It does look like our next teams, Flies Easy and Foams22. I don't recognize really anyone on Flies Easy except maybe Stan, if it's the Stan I'm thinking of, as opposed to Foams22. Like, I mean, Bishop, Vera, Nico Chico, you know, some, some common names in top, low top, high mid level, you know? Yeah. That's what happens for uh, your top couple seeds in a uh, Proving Grounds event. What? What? I know. Crazy. But enough about them. Uh, what are you doing for Halloween, Kbot? Any plans? What am I doing for Halloween? I don't have any explicit plans for Halloween yet, but I do have a costume in case I happen to have Ooh. plans for Halloween. What are you going to be? I'm going to be Waldo. Very boring. Oh, nice. No, that's nice. I like it. But that's a classic. Yeah. Good joke. How are you? I like it. I, I mean, I... Uh. <laughs> I don't. I give out candy on Halloween because there's a lot of children around my area, yeah. and uh, I grew up in the middle of nowhere and couldn't give out candy for Halloween. So I kind of like to do it. Yeah. So I uh, I like make up these little treat bags because it's easier than like giving a handful of candy. I can just give them a bag, <laughs> you know. Um, yeah. So I have to like go out next weekend and pick up all of my candies and make my my treat bags all up. That's a lot of effort. It's fun. I just kind of like sit on the living room floor and watch a Halloween movie and <laughs> put together a treat bag. I don't think bag. that's any easier. <laughs> I'll say. Uh, yeah, it's easier. Then, that's fine. Uh huh. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. No, I uh, I, I really enjoyed uh, sitting in a neighborhood and handing out candy. 
Yeah, it's bit. nice. I think, frankly, quite a bit more than I actually enjoyed walking around from house to house and picking up the candy myself. Yeah. Especially as I got older. Um, but you can't really do that on a college campus. I mean, that, that, you could. Nah, yeah. Well, I, I, just, the, I grew up in the middle of nowhere. So, like, we would always have to, like, drive 15 minutes to get into the suburb. Um, and then, like, walk around the suburbs and get all the candy from the military families. <laughs> see, I feel like on most college campuses, if you were actually going to do some kind of trick-or-treat, or if there was, like, an organized trick-or-treat, and it was of college students, they'd yeah. expect something a little bit more in their candy. Yeah, I see. I see. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That could be a problem. But yeah. Uh, best of five for our winner's bracket round three here between the fourth and the fifth seed of the event tonight. We see a blob blobber out. Come on. Really? We're doing this? <laughs> Love to, really see the this. Love to see the I mean, it's from Nico, so like, it's not like that unusual. Yeah. Um, it is weird on this but, map. Like, even Pico will play Blob say, on this map. <laughs> blob and Kraken on this map of all yes. things. I suppose the Kraken, in principle, is not terrible, well, especially for uh, clams. Because yeah. for clams, because you, especially on this map, it is so difficult to get past one of three points. Right, this being one of them right here, and you see how easily the crab, or sorry, the kraken rather, can just uh, steamroll forward through uh, that specific objective and allow and enable the rest of the team to come through. Well executed push here, even though Foam's 22 goes three down, they'll get a couple for the road here, but uh, just a couple points on the board to start things out. And now, uh, here's the part where the blob starts to make a little bit more sense because Nico is just so proficient. On. Yeah, Nico's just better. Nico's just like, hey, I heard you were saying you're questioning my blog, so let me get three and get an open. So, uh, well, let me <laughs> be fine. clear. It's I was fine. not questioning Nico's blob. I was questioning <laughs> blob in general. Yes. Okay. I think of all the modes uh, on this map, this is probably the least questionable one to run a Kraken on. Uh, but yeah, it's it's definitely uh, unusual. But I mean, Nico's just doing a fantastic job. We're still three down with Fly ZZ. It, it looks like they all tried to rush in to grab Nico in mid, and then it just all kind of went down in the process, which is allowing yeah. Foam's 22 another push in. <laughs> it's pretty nasty. Here comes the Zuka again, right up to that left side, and now Vera is still around to throw in a couple of extra claims. Here is the point where the push starts to collapse, though Vera is going to get two for the road here, and now Nico is going to come back up with a couple more claims, extend the timer a little more as well, but it looks like this will finally be the end of it for Foam's 22 as FlyZZ. We haven't even said this name yet. FlyZZ? Yeah, FlyZZ. Yeah. I don't know. Sure. <laughs> sure. We'll go I mean, with they're that. eventually getting mid back. They took a little bit more time this time, which is kind of what we needed to see last time. We needed them not to just chase down the, the you know, the blob and to actually like take their time to paint up. So we're getting that and two down. Now's a good time to take that opening and get in. Um, if they can watch out for the carbon, are going to get two balls in. It doesn't look like they have a whole lot left on them, but they are going to get a few cheeky picks up here on the right side. Toffee doing a fantastic job stalling with this sword, but might have to abandon here soon the Zuka coming yeah. out to demolish them. And that's a push over. But 54, I mean, in a single push isn't too bad. Single push, and hey, you've still got about half of the game left, so you can still build up plenty more, but the real thing I'll be looking for is just how well they're actually going to be able to shut down potential opportunities to run forward. We've seen this Foam 22 team be incredibly coordinated, especially once you see this Kraken come out, and here it is from Nico coming up this right side, immediately starts to punish some of these players that came in and dropped, but actually, FlyZZ went forward, took care of a couple of members there, and now Nico gets taken down uh, before jumping away. So we have another opportunity for a push, but already one member going down. Stan juggling two footballs forward and will miss one, but will land the second. Looks like that first one's just going to sit there, and now Toffee's going to try to come on in here with the zip caster, trying to open up the door for someone else to come in, but the football will despawn. An unfortunate push there altogether, uh, given by the fact that the purple team had to go down early. I said it when this map first came out, and I think the more I watch it played, the more I uh, 
think I was right, that this map runs pretty well like Scorch Gorge Clams, where uh, there's a lot of open space in mid, a very few clam spawns, few and far between, and uh, medium to hard difficulty breaking into the actual basket, which leads to uh, fewer pushes, more difficult pushes, but that pushes that go longer, if you know how to properly lock your clan pods. So uh, it, it looks like we see that happen time and time again. Flies easy here trying really hard to get into this into this basket and struggling time and time again, opening this basket just bits and bits at a time and just kind of have to keep hitting your head against that wall, you know? Just gotta keep yeah. trying over and over and over again until eventually you get a, a good push from there. I was about to say, I mean, both these teams look like they're just running at each other when they can. Uh, and then, like, you see the Kraken come out. The second that the Kraken despawns, Foam's 22 suddenly doesn't have a pay game plan. Flies EZ capitalized on it. Then what happens? Flies EZ runs a little bit too far forward, gets a little bit too excited to make a push happen. They go two down the front lines, and then they can't have as coordinated of a push coming through. But now they have a second. Do they have more clams to follow? As now it's a two-down situation. One more down. Lucina trying to come up with a few more here as well. And it looks like we'll be successful in doing so, though Archer is there. Still need another two clams in the basket here. Uh, as we see one player go back into mid, another player start to roam forward. But this is the point where Foams has the ability to shut down those entry angles to that basket on this map, and they will take the first game on this hold. Well done in order to stall out for long enough in order to make it so that uh, the push and all of its resources were completely exhausted. I uh, hate to say it, but I think that game could have been won if uh, they had locked pods correctly, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, the the well. locking pods on your half of the map is so important to force spawns on the enemy side. And we saw them, uh, they had to run all the way across the map just to find a singular clam pod. And if these pods over here that we see had been locked, they wouldn't have had to move nearly as far to- uh... Lily, what do you mean by locking clams? Oh yeah, so uh, each like, clam spawn. Am I supposed spawn. to pull out a little padlock and like you know <laughs> each stick clam it on a clam spawn to say this is mine now? Three is count as a pod, uh, and when you lock it, you pick up one or two, but not all three, because when there's still a clam on that spawn, the game registers it as closed and won't spawn clams there. So what you do is you lock the pods by leaving a clam on it. Uh, especially the ones further away from the enemy basket, so that when you're making a push, you can move uh, up and all of the clams that are spawning, um, because the game sees the basket is open and there's not a whole lot of clams on the map, it panics and tries to spawn clams faster. But it won't spawn them on your half of the map, where those pods are locked, because it's reading those pods as closed. There's still something there, we don't need to spawn anything, we can't spawn anything. Right. So you, you force all of those clams to spawn closer to you, so you don't need to go as far to get ones to keep the basket moving. No, 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 no. You do that. I yell at my players <laughs> to do that. Yes, okay. yes. Big different. Big difference. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's now called that the after clam that, strat. <laughs> now that we've learned all of that, let's not put it into practice, because it's time to put a splat <laughs> I mean, it's it's important. It's it's just one of those management it things. It's it's clam economy management that's important. Yep. Uh, it's one of those strats that really comes into play on maps where the clam spawns are like few and far between, like crab leg or scorch, or maps that are really big, so you have to travel very far. But yeah, we will go to zones on dime. My least favorite mode on this map least favorite yeah it's just well, okay it's... time out isn't zones just your least favorite in general nah, no not all the time it's most boring for sure but i zones here in particular i find is very lockout heavy it's like somehow this this is wahoo world but for some reason it's socially acceptable um <laughs> we've decided we we like it for some reason <laughs> but it's actually, just as lock and heavy as wahoo <laughs> we actually hate circles and that's why we oh wahoo. okay yeah this one's a square so that's why yeah it's like ohio i got you uh actually the so, more angles it has the better gotcha. uh so, so the cross on mako mark is significantly better 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's this top area right now where Nico Shiko is currently fighting. It's one of those areas like if the enemy team takes it, you're blocked out so significantly you need all your specials to break back in. And uh, that's pretty much what Wahoo World does. Um, but we, we like this one, I guess. So we yeah. play it. Uh, I and mean, that's fine. <laughs> it looks like a bit of a bloodbath right now. Flies is actually might lose control of the mid area right now. Two went down and Flumsnake was coming in with a vengeance. They're coming in with a vengeance. They're not coming in with a lot of bat coverage, but it looks like they're able to make it work nonetheless. Just rushing forward and utilizing the oppressive range of things like this range blaster right now. But guess what has more oppressive range? The Trizuka heading right for your face. It'll retake back the stack here and the zone will flip back to orange. Love to see it uh, already. Just getting that fast paint in, and FlyZZ is going to be able to start this lockout that they were trying to get going before, but they were always kind of like a bit of a flux state up in this top right. This time it looks like a true lockout. Um, the members of Foes 22 coming in with the Zuko with the blaster, able to push the members of FlyZZ out. Except for some cheeky flanks and ink jets, I guess. Yeah, the Inkjet goes up in the air here, trying to stall out for just a little bit more time. Lucina now drops back down. Notably, though, did pop the Inkjet before, uh, after dropping down, I should say. That way was safe on the recall. But here comes Foams 22. Looks like they're able to take back control of the zone. Now that they've got two down and continuing to roll right on through back to the other side of the map. And here's where the lockout sets up again, though this time... Vera is the one with the uh, with the Zuko. We'll use it now. Target it down to this left side. Can't come up with anything there. And now throws that Hail Mary shot up to the top left. All of a sudden, though, we'll see what engagement comes in from Flyzizi. Although already the stamper has gone down. That felt like a very early Zuko, but it seems to have worked out for them. Uh, Foams 22 managing to maintain this space. And Flyzizi just struggling so hard to get towards this zone. They do lose the lead, 20 ticks left on the clock, and Foams 22 is still managing to hold this. Vera coming in from behind, going for a few sneaky picks. He's gonna get taken down by the Inkjet, and, not Inkjet, the Zuka, and the Zuka finishing just in time, unfortunately, to go down on top of that zone. They did get the cap, so they do manage to apply that penalty, but that's a massive penalty to have to work through in a minute and a half when your entire team's lost. I would be very interested to see the stats lines here from Foams 22 in their games tonight because on paper, I don't feel like this composition should work. For all intents and purposes, <laughs> the Rage Blaster and the Carbon Roller both are so paint hungry uh, that, that they just need so much in order to do their jobs effectively. And yet, they're both able to do their jobs effectively, in large part probably because the Blob is still able to paint a decent amount. Uh, but also, I think it's in large part thanks to the fact that they're moving and working so well together as a team while they're going through things. Now, Vera tries to go in a little bit and eventually gets one, but doesn't come up with anything else. Here comes Bishop onto the side, but again, Flies Easy will finally find the cap to flip the zone back the other way. A minute left to play, and now two down for them. Foams 22 regains control of the zone, and look at this beautiful collapse and pressure down from Foams 22 targeting that right side of the map, taking the member out, and now turning their attention back to this stack. Soda coming out. Uh, I mean, 24 ticks on the clock, about 15 seconds. It looks like right in time. Two going three going down to that Zuka. And we see why top level hates it so much right now. Can we stop for a second to grab that soda before going into paint the zone? I mean, nothing left to lose. They've already pushed a three. Who cares about a little bit of penalty on them? We're going to have to see if Flies Easy can actually get a successful walkout this time. It makes me a little nervous oh. to see how far back they're playing from this top right side. They're kind of playing mm -hmm. on zone, and I want to see them play a little bit closer because they're kind of just allowing Foam 22 to walk up. And all with the range that this co team composition has, you do not want to let that happen. Here comes Vera, finds at least a trade, and now the position is much more difficult for FlyZZ to try to find the hold. Overtime will expire there, and Foams 22 will secure the second game. Nice. Oh, this is the best of five. Mm -hmm. I was about to congratulate them on winning, but we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Not, done. not quite. Yeah, yeah, for all just... purposes, this composition should work. Don't, Ish. don't, don't go to your other games, folks, and and just play the comp and hope it works. Okay, because 
so much of the time. I feel like we look at a weapon composition and go, oh, it worked for them, so it's going to work for us. That is no. not how weapon comps work, no. okay? Each one of these players is a very individual play style. Uh, this team has a decent amount of familiarity with one another, right? Uh, here or there. So at the end of the day, you can't fully go through this. Okay, we are getting uh, some of the stats here. Uh, looking at this, 2100 paint for Nico on the blob. Goodness. Holy mackerel. Can we talk about the 25 for Nico? 1832 for Archer. 20 splats and assists for Bishop. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I mean, it does need paint. And for, yeah. the, for what it's worth, Nico and Archer are painting the floor pretty well. <laughs> so, as it turns out. Yeah. But FT Wind did double not, so. Yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they also How played Rel on land, so we should all do that. And... Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh. yeah. I, it felt like a like old cherry limeade comps had that problem where sometimes people would like try what we were playing and they'd be like it doesn't work it's garbage and be like well <laughs> Lily's been playing junior for eight years. Uh, Pika. And not only has Lily been playing junior <laughs> for eight years, Lily has developed a very specific flavor of Splattershot Junior. What um, flavor is it? Um, probably lemon. Hmm. I like lemon. No cherry lime, I guess. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> yeah. And it's the same thing with the rest of our teammates, right? Like, like everyone had a specific way that they played something and we knew how things worked. Yeah. In, and we had a lot of experience together and you take those pieces apart and they don't necessarily fit back the same way. So, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's the same thing here. Uh, I don't recommend everyone go out and play this comp, but I mean, if anyone wants to try it, I'd love to see it. If Actually, you want I'm gonna to DM this it. comp. I'm gonna DM this comp to my team and see if they'll try it. Uh, right. Because <laughs> you have a carbon roller and blaster player whose names are not Pika Dave. Uh, well, a blaster could be Krim. Carbon. I would. Uh, cool place. Carbon, and then we'll just throw Nova <laughs> to Zap. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing could possibly go wrong. It's fine. Nothing could possibly go wrong. <laughs> Next map. No issues. Gonna go into tower control. Hagglefish market. Uh, I, from how things have gone so far, I mean, this could go either way, but it feels like Foam Stone Two just has a little bit more initiative, a little bit more like confidence in what they're pulling. Yes. Uh, and I think that that's really important on this map in particular uh, too. So if they just keep up that confidence. Um, I feel like this could be uh, a, a fairly, fairly quick match for Foam 22. Interestingly, here though, early Nico gets taken down. I didn't quite see what to. Traded back the other way, and now Toffee is going to be the target on this side of the map. Traded out again, and so there's some early trades here back and forth as the map is still largely neutral. Now Lucina gets another one to send Nico back to spawn for the second time already. And it looks like the Zuko popped a little preemptively. Can't get a lot done. Now we're starting to see this come out here. Four flies easy. Inkjet up in the air out of Lucina. But again, so far spread out were so mem were these members of the purple team. Can't fully get a coordinated push together. And Foam 22 is able to pierce right through them. So far in this first minute, Lucina really is just MVP. Just has already gotten, what, five picks <laughs> between blasts and ink jets and, and probably a few more on assists as well. A couple members of Foam 22 just not able to stay up. It looks like they're just, right now, they're just lacking that stability, which probably has a lot to do with Nico going down pretty early. Uh, the Zuka is going to come out and stall them a little bit longer while that tower approaches first checkpoint. It doesn't think it's going to be an easy clear, but I don't know how much further they'll get on top of that. Quite look like it without the support of a lot of the team. We'll see Stan try to hop up to this right side, and now actually looks like we saw Farrako in a little bit too far there ahead of the team just a little bit. And now we're right back up to the second check here for Flyzeezy. Deck cooler out on the tower, bomb thrown that way, and 
will take out the member that was there. Toffee might look to try to make an approach, but no. Will elect to back on away, or at least try to be a pesky for a moment before getting spotted out by Bishop. Trades, though, as a suction bomb comes back through. And Stan's looking to continue to maintain a presence over here for Flyzizi. Toffee jumps in, able to get right back into the fray. And this push is, is, might be down for a moment, but certainly not out yet. Absolutely not out yet. Uh, it, the positioning from FlyZZ and the pressure they're putting on is just Foam Saint 2 cannot regain that footing at all. Another inkjet coming out on left from Lucina. Gonna get another pick and potentially a third here on Vera. Barely surviving of that inkjet. And uh, FlyZZ just keeping this, this tower moving. They've already wrote the first two checks. They essentially have winning score. It's... 28, it's not as good as it could be, but breaking that second check is massive, so just Foam 22 just really needs to get their shit together. Can we swear on this broadcast? I'm doing it again. They gotta get well. their shit together. <laughs> uh, looks like this might be the turning point they need. I think that, was that four? Uh, at least four? three. At least three. Oh, it was at least three. I know that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Hats off to Bishop there. And again, look, that's the name of the game right now, is it is these indirects or potentially directs that either Blaster can try to find because those are the longest range weapons on the team. And one of the reasons why the Foams 22 team hasn't been able to establish themselves so far is because such a focus has been taken towards taking Nico out. But now the push is starting to collapse as we see the range of the Splatana Stamper come right back out. Toffee, I think, went on a three streak there as well. And this push will stop at the first check. Unfortunately, only getting halfway through that first check, too. Not even a full push through, which is really unfortunate. They needed that momentum for their next push because you're getting to that last minute. You don't want to have to break two checkpoints. At the same time on this map, you need your resources to kind of stagger through, and two checkpoints is difficult. So, it, not an ideal position. Uh, at least they're not all out of the game just yet. They are. Nico's doing a fantastic job here, just frantically painting the map, and it does look like they're going to go all three in and potentially take out most of Fly ZZ, <laughs> at least regain some control of this mid area. Speaking of not exactly ideal, a lot of those specialists from ZZ were committed incredibly early, looking for hopeful picks is the only thing that I can really say. Uh, there didn't seem to be a lot of a target or an idea other than, let me just pop my Zooka and see if anyone happens to get something, which it tends to be back to this lottery ticket Zooka idea, which I don't tend to favor, but that's a story. For another day 25 seconds left to play here and even still FlyZZ has this on the other side of the map lucina still putting out a lot of effort here and a lot of pressure on this rapid here comes the inkjet up in the sky and i don't know what exactly it is overall here but it feels like this rapid blaster has just had such a massive impact on this map in ways that we did not see on the previous two games in this series yeah, Lucino, as I said in that first minute, truly the MVP of this game. I don't even need to see the stats to know that. Just fantastic ink jets, constant ink jets, beautiful picks and assists across the board. Just, yeah, Lucino played that very, very well and enabled the rest of the team incredibly well as, uh, on top of that. And I just, yeah. I will not well, be proven wrong. No stats. It's, it's very easy to... Uh keep the momentum and pressure up when you don't have a 2138 blob on the enemy team. <laughs> it's very uh, flies easy. That was a stretch. I was it though? That was a stretch. <laughs> Stretching is stretch. good for you. So well. <laughs> Stretching yeah. is good for you. So everyone stand up right now stretch. Stretch your your arms out, stretch your back. Very important. <laughs> what if I continued to hunch over in my chair? Mm, shrimp, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need to invert the shrimp, though. What? In the invert the shrimp. <laughs> we went from you doing a very bad... Good. Easy, easy Yeah. ...pun mm -hmm. to inverted shrimp. Yeah. Anyways... <laughs> Whoop and freaking fish. Yeah, it's important. <laughs> Into game four. How real is that? <laughs> oh my gosh. Doesn't look like uh. any comp changes at all, really. So mm. things still sticking through, still normal. 
Gonna have to see if uh, Vera maybe has an easier time on this map, which, you know, it's a carbon. <laughs> it's a carbon. I don't know actually who I want here because I feel like the taller ledges will make it slightly more difficult for the rapid to have as much value as it would have, right? Right. I mean, you sure, would Sure, that's so. still probably true for the range and true certainly for the carbon roller, but I feel like it's most exaggerated on the rapid blaster, no? You would think, um, God, Lucina, just calm down. Lucina didn't want to win a uh, lose, a uh, trio, yeah. I guess. So Lucina's just out here, just flexing. <laughs> uh -huh. um, I'm just constantly impressed. I forgot what we were talking about, but now we're talking about Lucina, who's doing a fantastic job, just got a triple, <laughs> pushing their team forward. They are probably gonna get this checkpoint. It's really just Nico in the way who has gone down. Uh, if I were Foams, I would just give this checkpoint. You can always give the first checkpoint, it's fine. Um, <laughs> but this is where things get difficult. This is where things get hard, and Nico coming in clutch looks like on that top side. <laughs> Vera just trying so hard <laughs> around that glass yeah. to get a few picks. And and uh, we're just seeing Lucina again with that inkjet, getting a double, maybe a triple. I think Luna just has decided that they were not going to lose this set. Yeah. Um, single handedly and just started yeah. playing incredibly well. I, I, I don't actually <laughs> know what this is because this is kind of crazy in terms of what we're seeing out of this rapid blaster. I know Lucina has been playing this rapid for quite a decent time. Yeah. Uh, you know, leading into this point. So good to see it actually start to get some value and some payoff here uh, in a tournament setting. But now we'll see what Foes 22 can do as they've broken past the checkpoint. Zuka out. Nico picks the Rainmaker. He's going to go barreling forward down to the 24 point mark here. Uh, and well done by Foams in order to find this push. Looks like Archer and Vera likely going to decide to back away. Vera might stick around in Sharp, see if they can get one or two people on the exit here. But uh, overall, another fantastic play from Foams, keeping in line and staggering up with a lot of those specials in order to get that push where they have Absolutely. 36 was not a winning push. Uh, with the lockout, it looked like they were having it could have been, but it's not usually. 24, now that both teams have gotten to about this point, neither of these are winning pushes. This game is going to be contested to the very end and nothing is safe. Nothing and no one is safe. Please keep running. That's right. <laughs> you are not safe. Hey, it is Friday the 13th. Oh, it's true. In October. In it's October spooky. of all months. So, <laughs> things are getting interesting here. A 3v3 and barely recalling with that. Gonna go down to several shots from several different angles. And Flyzeezy is on the back foot again. Gonna take out that Rainmaker. But Flyzeezy is far from safe. It looks like 2v2 essentially. Gonna go down in mid inkjet. Lucina unfortunately not able to. Uh, what? wipe the whole team as we've been seeing so far this game yeah. <laughs> but yeah how dare you for one time you can't wipe the whole team is the one time we need it right nico picks back up this rainmaker going back up this flat side here comes the zuka targeting that very rainmaker and he'll take it out two down on both sides lucita gets taken out of the sky here versus bishop down there and it does look like vera will once again elect to back away and provide jumps in for at least bishop here and then start to go over to this left side, trying to utilize the range of these burst bombs here to poke and prod at these members of FlyZZ, make sure they don't feel comfortable. Because really right now, the game plan for Foams 22 is not let the enemy team on your own plat. No real need to assert yourself in a large way on a push. Instead, very easy to play defense once you've got to push down to 24 yourself. Absolutely, and it looks like they're just planning to stage this defense on the far right side. We've seen this happen a few top teams. I believe FT Win has played or Starburst. Um, maybe it was Crush Soda. I don't know. You know, one of those big teams at a big event played yeah. that. And it's honestly probably the best place to camp it. You're forcing the enemy team to push into you at an awkward angle. Uh, but FlyZZ just said no, coming all the way in top feet, trying to get on this top side, but does get. Like the Rainmaker got picked off from behind and only two members up with some jumps in. It's going to be a hard pick in the last 10 seconds. 10 to go here, and yeah, this one's looking 
about Doom. We see the rush towards the Rainmaker, but with only two members up, Lucina is going to go in the air and get one for the road. And Foams 22 will advance in the winner side of the bracket on to winner semifinals. Are we already at winner semis? I think so. That can't be true. Yeah, it's winter semis. No, that can't be yep. true. No. Uh, that's what happens when there's a 18 team tournament. Really. <laughs> I'm not used it's, to that. It, well, none of us are. <laughs> none of us Where are. Where is everyone's playing Ludi tonight? That's why. That's that. No, yeah. that's actually real. That's yeah, legitimately. <laughs> Weekly tournaments suffer so much in terms of daily signups because teams take Ludi way too seriously. Well, especially especially on the weekends. Um, like like yeah. SOS probably still doing fine because no one's scheduling their Ludi match for Wednesday night. No, 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 no. <laughs> Even SOS will probably have register numbers down. Eh, we'll see. As long as they're still they will have, who even cares. <laughs> they will have reg numbers down not because teams are actually playing their looty sets on Wednesday, but because teams don't want to burn themselves out of competition Fair. and don't want to play on both Wednesday and another day. But on the upside, SOS is running looty maps, so teams see it as good practice for it. Uh, yeah, except they still don't sign up because they'd rather only play their looty match or focus so much more about the actual match at hand. Ah, sounds fake. Um, <laughs> what do you mean sounds fake? It's sounds literally fake. what happens. Look at every other looty season under the sun. Okay. Mm, sounds fake. Um, I don't know anything. <laughs> I don't know anything about tournaments. Listen, for SOS, all that matters. For Proving Grounds, what happens is we get a double O name. For SOS, all that matters is that they have fewer teams passed the registration. Like, <laughs> they, they have a cap. They hit their cap. As long as they hit their cap, I'm sure they don't really care. But Well, but this tournament went from... 64 down to or like 68 some nights right down to 18 showing up on tournament night yeah that's because everyone's playing Ludi. this is they're a friday all night playing so they're all they're playing Ludi. all playing all of them Ludi. yeah all of them right yeah yeah all of them all of them <laughs> it's actually probably homecoming weekend for for high schools or something i right? don't what is oh um, oh Oh. This is an American thing that has to do with football, right? Kind of, yeah. Okay. For whatever reason, uh, they pick one home game to be the homecoming day after okay. like an away game has happened. And there's like a, after, usually like, like a big pep rally and like a dance And there's or like a parade and a pep rally and a, and then the day after there's It happens a in America and TV and shows a, a lot. Big thing. Yeah, yeah. And then kind of the homecoming College homecoming. Dance. College homecoming is a lot different, though. College oh, homecoming it? is like alumni day, basically, and that's that's it. Weird. There's no there's a parade and there's like you know some traditions that each university tends to have, but it's no like dance and there's not drama involved. And there's that sounds fake. There's the always stuff. drama. It's America. If I've learned yeah, anything yeah. from media, there's always drama at home. Yeah, uh, you know what? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there's always drama at home. Oh, uh, yeah. And I think that's, yeah. Yeah. We never got We don't have teams. homecoming. I, not where if I am. Did, I'd find an even worse format to scare people away. <laughs> that sounds like Actually right. doing God's work out here. 07, soldier. 07. I can't believe you just said that out loud. <laughs> what? I just... Nothing, don't worry about it. <laughs> People have said it before. I am mm. not the first person to have said this. Sounds fake. I might be the first Splatoon commentator to have said this on a tournament stream. Yeah. But I am not the first honest. person ever to say it. I'll forgive you, I guess. What about y'all chat? Right. Anyone in chat have any plans for Halloween? Any costumes? Any fun costumes? I never dress up for Halloween. I, I don't know. I'm too self-conscious to dress up for Halloween, but I always like love seeing everyone else's costumes. So so really? any 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 costumes? Any fun plans? Any any haunted houses? I don't know. Haunted houses. <laughs> I don't know. Here we get corn mazes. I usually I don't, I don't know if that's a thing down yeah, there. Yeah, corn too. mazes are fun. Okay. We I've invented corn, Lily. 
Oh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not really, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, fair. Fair, fair. Um, my region invented corn. Region. Actually. <laughs> yeah. my, my global area. Yes. No, the Midwest. In the it's US. amazing. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> You know that I'll give you credit for that one though. That was a lot better than. Oh, thank it you. Was, than was it cornier or whatever? Yes, yes. Excellent. I'm glad. <coughs> <coughs> God, I'm getting sick from these jokes. Um, Good. <laughs> Paris. Good. Paris. Wow. All right. Well, this is the bad luck that I had coming for me on my Friday the Thirteenth. Jeez. How brutal is that? Um, I know. Oh, this is Just, fun. Um, <laughs> oh, happy belated um, Canadian Thanksgiving. Yeah, Which yeah. But so year. what do you all do for that? Uh, we don't celebrate colonialism. Right. So that's one part that's good. Uh, it's usually just like a yeah. celebration of the harvest. So like you just get together with family and eat food. And that's pretty much it. Okay. So, so well, yeah. for, we don't. I mean, that's basically what we do. Yeah. But then there's like parades, I guess, for some reason. And there's like. There's a one large parade for us. Um, and it's like, I yeah. guess there's some like colonialism things. But most people aren't thinking about that when they're like sitting around with family and having a large meal. Oh, we also have like an indigenous day, like like a day before Thanksgiving or something. It's pretty rad. But yeah, we normally just like we have a turkey dinner. So like turkey and potatoes and peas and carrots and stuffing yeah. and pies and Okay, so it's the same as it's the same as US. Right. Yeah, yeah. We get together and we eat food and then right. my family plays board games afterwards because it's a holiday. Yeah. Uh, so right. everyone has the next day off, and then we go into turkey comments. Um, <laughs> so, a couple of updates. Uh, that free glue gunner team just 3 owed a team of uh, Zenith, Babsy, Kara, and Kaden. Oh, wow. Sending the one seed in the tournament down to losers. Uh, and so it'll be free glue gunner going up against Foams 22 on the winner side of the bracket. Wow. And meanwhile, things have played nearly as expected here uh, on the lower half. CJ squad looks like they got uh, a 2-0 victory there in round two. But otherwise, it is second seeded in control Red Sun versus third seeded Sweet Tooth here uh, for our winner's semifinals. Mm -hmm. With in control Red Sun and Sweet Tooth coming out here. Uh, familiar names, obviously, yet again. <laughs> if you don't know Red Sun, you've been in a turkey coma probably for the, the past few months <laughs> this year. <laughs> yeah, turkey uh, coma since last Thanksgiving. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> which is either which is either twelve months if you're Canadian or eleven months if you're American. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't it be thir no eleven? You're right. That's how no. time works. Yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I'm not. I um, thought I was the tired one today. I'm actually uh, becoming like more and more awake as this goes on. Listen, as an animator, the only math I really have to use is to count by twos. Um, and that's pretty much it. So, count by twos? Yeah, yeah. My animation's always on twos. Almost always on twos. So factors of one, two, three are pretty much all I really concern myself with. Sometimes fours. Sorry, I couldn't hear about all those numbers. I was too busy bobbing my head to the music in the background that's playing right now. Oh, I'm not listening. No, I turned it up. Okay, I can't, I can't sing. And it's certainly not, <laughs> uh, certainly not in time. No, keep going. It's, it's karaoke night. night. It's karaoke no, night. Keep good. going. <laughs> actually, I think I'm good. So next land, we're doing karaoke, right? I'm actually down. I've never actually done karaoke ever, so... Although the way to do it is more of like a karaoke room and not like a, you know, there's yeah, a yeah, queue yeah. of two yeah. hours long and you have to you like rent out those little rooms and you. stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. 
There's almost always an attempt to get a group. Yeah. Um, I almost got to go at a beacon pre-COVID. There was a group happening yeah. at a... What's that arcade place with the bowling? Round, Round one. one? Yeah. Yeah. They were going to get a room, but it was going to take forever. And then, yeah, we ended up not yeah. doing it. But it was really unfortunate because I heard they had a lot of fun. Like, nine went and I got to see a video later, but... My ride yeah. was like, let's leave. And I was like, I guess. Oh. <laughs> it's fine. I had already spent a lot of money around once. So I figured I probably should listen right. to you. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Maybe, maybe LTC next year. Imagine that, though. That was like four years ago. God, don't do this to me. <laughs> mm hmm. Beacon. Where's my badge? Was it? Yeah, 2019. Okay, that was four years ago. Mm -hmm. Goodness gracious. Yeah. I'm gonna have some water. Okay. Have fun with that. Oh, chat. Uh, hydrate. Yeah. Hydrate. That's Before important. Before hydrate. Right. Dihydrate doesn't even make sense. Hydrate before you dihydrate. No, I know you're just saying it to rhyme with the last word you said, but dihydrate is not a word, mm. nor is drate a, like, actual suffix that means anything well i suppose it probably is elemental can you kick kbot from the vc for being a bummer oh come on <laughs> thank you all right so this is the lily show featuring lily no <laughs> no so, here's the problem with kicking me from the vc mm -hmm. is that i had to take my hands out of my pockets because i'm hurt <laughs> over my chair with my hands mm -hmm. in my pockets to reach over to my mouse to reconnect. St stretching is good for you. Up the, it's stretching, yeah. That, whoa, the, the one foot range that I needed to move my arm <laughs> to accomplish that goal. Real difficult. Depends how big your feet are. But uh, getting into the game, it looks like we're missing what? a brush today. That's a good treat. On top I'm, of we're the going pencil. back to this. We're going back to this. <laughs> what did you just say? Depends how big your foot is. <laughs> what does the size of my foot have to do with? You said you had to move one hand? foot. <laughs> if your feet no, are really I small. No, I moved my hand from my pocket <laughs> to the mouse. My foot had nothing to do with this. I failed to see how that's relevant. You're just getting confused here. <laughs> yeah, just Americans will use anything with the metric system. Um, getting into the game, zones on Haggle here. <laughs> getting real exciting too, going down Sweet Tooth, potentially more. Managing to nail it out with the Nautilus. Nautilus lately has just been an absolute beast, and I'm loving seeing it back in the game because good Nautilus players are insane um, and can make me scared for my life. Yeah, and guess what? It's going to absolutely shred against a V-Shot. What it won't shred against is when the V-Shot happens to have a Zuko on five, but every other time it'll be fine. Um, also, interesting composition out of Brett Sun here. This is not a look we typically see for them, although it appears to be a look that's working as Krim is able to pull out the Snipe Rider and get two plus an assist. Enabling Red Sun to continue coming forward. Normally we see Krim on the ball point or something, uh, but instead picking up the pencil here must still be feeling confident and, and does enable this uh, double uh, Trizuka composition to come out of the twin V shots here out of Red Sun. But now we see the re-engage from Sweet Tooth. It's a very quick zone flip back the other direction, but they're not going to be able to stabilize this position by the looks of it, as it looks like it's going to keep falling apart. Daybreak comes in just a little bit too late, and the zone's going to be taken right back by Red Sun. I know, it's just got absolutely beamed by Red Sun. <laughs> Setting up here for a, a pretty solid looking uh, lockout. I would love to see a member of Red Sun actually like going up into spawn to prevent stuff like this coming out. But when I mean, you've got a Zuka, I, you could explode to a bomb, but you could also take out one. I don't I, that was no case, Zuka. I'll give it to them. It was okay. <laughs> Bam, yeah, looking like, oh, yeah, Sharky yeah, on the yeah, right hand yeah. side. Uh, is going to threaten a few coming in. It, Sweet Tooth is really running out of time to, to come back in and get this zone. It does look like it's going to be able to interrupt here in just a moment, but painting over the opposing team here is proving quite difficult. Strikes out. Finally, the zone will get capped, applying that penalty, but now Zuka comes out immediately in response while Sweet Tooth was trying to move forward into the zone, and it does catch at least one member 
off guard. Now we see Red Sun sweep back through, continue to clear out the enemy side of the map, and now it's another two down against Sweet Tooth, while Red Sun continues to maintain so much space around the zone. And this team so effective in terms of when they're deciding to make those engagements happen. Here comes Azuka, has to get dodged out of the way. Bam, ducks behind cover for a moment in order to get away from that one. And now it's looking like they're going to try to fend off a flank coming in from the left side. Here comes Zipcaster though, over across the zone. Now Sweet Tooth starts to roll on through and they'll start to continue pushing forward. Krim forced to jump on away and finally Sweet Tooth might have control of the zone, but looks like there's one person still behind them. That last person behind them forced to jump out just to stay alive and try to retake. But I mean, <laughs> counting down already into the 50s, looking pretty good in control, trying to take some ground in their own court is going to go two down on either side and maintain zone for Sweet Tooth. Uh, things aren't looking too dire just yet. Red Sun still has a couple specials live coming out as we speak. Probably are going to be able to retake this zone just right now. <laughs> yeah, right now. Yeah, it's done. Uh, Krim managing right to stave off some, uh, some paint from the other team using that extended range on the pencil, but what can you do? Then hey, Sweet Tooth responds in kind right back the other way, and now they've got yet another hole despite having a penalty to dig right on through. One Zuka comes out here a beam, attempting to just clear out the courtyard by the looks of it. The Junkie, still over there on the left side, gets called out. Now it's gonna be the target of things. The strikes come out to try to throw off the push forward from Red Sun, but you cannot strike away the Ink Zuka. It is inevitable, and it will come back and jump scare you once again on this Friday the 13th. Now it's a three down situation though as Sweet Tooth finds Zuka of their own. Keto comes forward, able to find one on that play. And now once again, Sweet Tooth has the opportunity for a hoe. Red Sun so far doing a great job of coming in and capping just to apply that penalty. With 15 seconds left on the clock, it's gonna be a great opportunity for them to do that just one more time. They're gonna have to get in here, get one more cap on the zone to win this game. Two going down pretty brutally, a third on top of that. This looks like Sweet Tooth's game. I'm gonna need to see a replay on this last little bit here, but it felt like Red Sun just pushed a little bit too far forward, a little bit too quickly. I think they had enough time to charge up another special or two, but they elected to not dove right into court while Sweet Tooth had all of the space in the world. And of course, anytime you're trying to make a push at the end of the game into the enemy team that's actually holding the zone means uh, that you're just going to be more anxious. It's going to be more difficult in order to try to make that happen. Uh, we see mm -hmm. this come out here and now, yeah, it looks like two members go down, just if jumping right guess. into the three members around uh, from Sweet Tooth there. They went down simultaneously. If I had to guess, it was probably to a bomb. They yeah. probably dove down without full clearance and, and ran right into a bomb. If I had to make an educated guess, uh, that's really unfortunate though. That, that really did cost them that game, unfortunately. Fumbled that very last push. It was really unfortunate. What can you do? What you can do is you can live and learn. Oh uh, yeah, Gigi's go next. And you can hang on the edge of tomorrow. Uh, is that a quote from something? <gasps> really? Is it? <laughs> really? What? Really? What? <laughs> yes, it's a Sonic song. Oh. I was never really big into Sonic, I'm sorry. Live and learn, hanging <laughs> on the edge of tomorrow. You've never heard, you've heard this song before. Maybe, probably not. I, maybe. I am rather confident you've heard this song before. It's possible. It's possible. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I played like one or two Sonic games growing up, and that's kind of it. Um, they yeah. are right. Yeah, right. Yeah. I've always liked some of the designs in Sonic. There's like this new character that's like not a ferret, but she's like striped, ring-tailed something. I don't know. I kinda love her. I have no idea what you're talking about. I zoned out there for a moment. That was Good. Uh, Go back to battle. Yeah. I want to. In fact, I'm probably going to after this. Oh nice. 
I'm proud yeah. of you for going to bed early and taking care of yourself. Yeah, I did not sleep well last night at all. I got up at like 7.30 this morning. Mm, getting old. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, how come uh, that's what I was thinking of. I was thinking of your Sonic OC. Do not steal. Um, thank you. <laughs> Getting into it. Second game, of course, in true tradition, is on TC. Where else would it be? Woohoo! <laughs> hey, it wasn't counterpicked this time. So it's they true, would, well, but it is the second one. Is, this one is just Popgun's fault. How about that triple, though, uh, from Bam to open things up? Uh, and now Red Sun has the opportunity to get the snowball rolling here. Nico, a little bit too far forward, too quickly, but now we'll pop the Zooka, trying to recontest bats at the same time that the ink jets up in the air. I died a little bit there inside, and now it means that Red Sun doesn't have further specials to establish this push, and it will collapse before it gets past the second jet. I was honestly a little confused when you go back up there, and then I remember Zuka was a thing, and that they might want to shoot it from further away. But I mean, I think you should just face tank that. Just like push up, keep keep running it. It's fine. Well, no, no, no. So what you do, what you do is you wait two more seconds for the inkjet to go off, and then you push up with the inkjet, and then you're establishing yourself up in bats, and now you've got the Zuka to continue applying even further pressure up in the enemy spawn, but never mind that, because apparently Red Sun doesn't need my advice at all, because they're already sitting here at the third checkpoint. Uh, now, Beam getting back on top of the tower here, and we'll be looking down uh, to try to take care of business. Here's both Zukas used by Red Sun once again, eliminating all members of Sweet Tooth nearly completely. And while the Ink Storm rolls through the zone, only one member will be around. It'll get cleaned up rather quickly. Here's one member, slips behind, bam, and now will get taken down, down to the three-point mark. But Beam sits right back on top of the tower, and Red Sun will run away with that one in true Splatoon 2 Tower Control Inkblot Art Academy fashion. It ain't winter yet, but well, that sure was a snowball. Wow. <laughs> I'm so proud of you for that pun. Um, that was a very low hanging fruit. I was good though. I'm so proud. That was very low hanging. As your I father have incorporated and a curator actual of dead puns. <laughs> I have incorporated actual puns mm -hmm. into my commentary. I'm aware. On I'm occasion. proud of you. Yeah. I'm proud of you. Yeah, I'm, I'm, so that game might have happened. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure. I think we just hand shook to give it to Red Sun um, so that we can go to game five. I'm pretty sure we're going to game five. Um, Undertone Rainmaker is going to be the next one. Uh, classic. I feel like this one's been on the roster pretty much since Splatoon 2 started. Um, yeah. So, I mean, everyone should know how to play it by now. A lot of people still don't know how to play it, which is surprising to me. Um, oh, okay. And I'm at the point of my tired where I'm getting a little saucy. So, you know, we'll see. <laughs> a lot of people just forget that right check is an option at all. Yeah, let's say right, right check is harder to snowball or push off of. Like, yeah, I keep realize that. Moving. Yeah, so so people but, tend to just not do it, but but it's a lot easier to get a check. Mm -hmm. Which, especially within the first like minute of the game, is all you're probably looking for anyway. Depends. In a lot of cases. I mean, it's situational, of course. Yeah, right? yeah, of course. I mean, everyone's wiped or everyone's, like, stacked up on left. Sometimes people just try to force it left anyway, and I'm like, hey, why just not go right? Just, yeah. just go right. Just go, it's free. Just go right. It's right there. It's free. It's that easy. Yeah. Have you tried just winning the game? Yeah, that's real. Yeah. This is why I can't be a coach. So I'll just be like, have you tried just, like, not being bad? <laughs> yeah. Have you tried that? <laughs> I mean, hey, I'm I'm starting to I think I think this is like the normal diagram part for for Splatoon coaches. Where on one end you go, have you considered not being bad? And then you have the normal diagram and then in the middle you have the well, you should consider they're doing this and this and this and this and blah blah blah, right? Yeah. And then the other end of it is have you considered not being bad? Yeah. And I've gotten I'm starting to get back over to the have you considered not being like bad? just make better choices like i don't know <laughs> you made a well, bad when you say the same thing for like a year straight okay it hasn't been a year but when you say the same thing for like three months straight to the same players on the same team and they still don't do them 
Oh no, that's. I mean, there's that's only just the so much more. That's just the nature of this game. Because this game that is, is one where like it moves so quickly in it, you can't think during the game. You think before the game, you think after the game, during the game, you have to rely on, on instinct and split second decisions. Right. So the point is to say those things often enough and 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 you know, it's loud enough that eventually those things that you want your players to do, those good things, become routine. Right now they're not routine, because you've only been saying they're for three months. But it, you know, it just feels annoying because you're like, man, I've been saying this for three months. But you know. Takes longer than that to go to It's been longer than three months. Anyways. <laughs> oh, we're going for that right check, maybe? Right check. Getting pushed out by this rain is unfortunately having to lean right. And now, last alive of that remake are not wanting to die on the right side. Gonna run forward and perish in zone, leading to a very, very fast push for Sweet Tooth up this left hand side. Very unfortunate. Is gonna get that checkpoint. Is gonna go down to the Zuka. Only one player left for running for their lives. While red but side hey, rolls back into mid. Not only on the defensive side, but also on the offensive side. Look at how well Sweet Tooth is playing together as a team. The team that is playing off of each other and playing with each other, where they're all targeting a specific side of the map at once, it tends to be the more successful team. And now look at this. In control, rolls into one side of the map that's already being looked at by Sweet Tooth. They collapse on it, find a two or three down situation, and now it's right back up this left side and this left ramp. What, even though the bombs are still coming out, they're starting to get this Rainmaker in further and further forward positioning. Here comes Azuka, but no, it goes down to the suction bomb, and the inkjet comes through from Grim to shut things down here at the 60-point mark. It was looking promising there for a moment, but again, hats off to Sweet Tooth for being able to play decisively as a team. Oh, in control. In control. If you let this reset, I swear to God. They're gonna let I'm this so reset. mad right now. I'm so mad right now. Why would you let that reset? They have full control of mid. Everyone's forward. Everyone's ready for a push, and they left Rainmaker to reset, so they had to wait like the full 10 seconds and then go back to get it, and now they're all gonna go down, and I'm just... In control? <laughs> I told you I was getting saucy. Where's your coach? <laughs> I'm gonna yell at him. Not, uh, I don't think they have a coach. They need uh, one. <laughs> well, I can't believe they let that reset. I'm just, if they lose this game. Anyways, uh, three down on the side. Not, two, two. This is gonna be the push they're looking for. Because that's a full delayed wipe. They are gonna get that checkpoint. Not in control of the tempo of the game, but in control of a lot of the individual picks that are coming through here. Although, as I say that, they attempt to commit everything for the Rainmaker Shield, but it gets collapsed on and choked out in the corner, much like the push on the other side of the map. 60 to 61 with two to play. Sweet Tooth also opting to let that reset. I hate it a little less because the members of Red Sun were coming back in and they had to contest for mid, but you know what helps contest for mid? A giant Rainmaker shot that explodes on the opponents. Funny. Well. <laughs> anyway. You know what else? You know what else helps? My Zuka. Mm, true. true. Yeah. True. Anyways, uh, hand control gonna take another swing at this. It doesn't look like there's anyone really ahead of them. One maybe a little behind. They are gonna get lead and push up that slick almost all the way to pedestal. A 16 is a tasty push on this map. It does look like they're gonna get away with it. And Sophie. I have something to say to you. Hi. Hi, Sophie. Um, um, apparently not. No. Um, what I was about to say about that last push was I don't actually know how that ramp was just left uncontested. It felt like Sweet Tooth just ended elected to drop and was trying to pincer in the corner and then uh, didn't actually protect the slick ramp. And so... Uh, I think it was Beam that was just able to continue running forward right over across of everything, get this thing down to the 16 point mark. And now 43 seconds left to play. All that Hit Control really wants to do is stall out this Rainmaker in mid. They'll pick it up to make it even more annoying for Sweet Tooth, who was looking to try to take the Rainmaker and the middle of the map as well. But now all of a sudden it's a three down situation. Sweet Tooth has another opportunity here. But again, they've got to act fast and decisively and can't get caught out like that because that's the range of the ball point splatlet. I'm going to need Sweet Tooth just to paint a little bit more. This is an opportunity here to maybe take some a bit of control of this right-hand side. They are going to pick up that remove. 12 seconds left on the clock. Doesn't put them in a great position. I'm not entirely sure where Daybreak is going, but uh, let's take the funny angle, I guess. 
uh, two down, or one down each on either side. Still some specials to go. That ink shed is going to be a problem. It does look like CT is going to lean this right-hand side, but there's a player respawning over here, and a bunch of players rotating incredibly quickly. It looks like they're just trying to keep Red Sun on their toes for the moment while they try to figure out what in the heck to do. Uh, down to 26 on the timer. They're starting to make me a little bit nervous going on this right hand side push and gonna get picked off by that inkjet. Very unfortunate. I'm a little upset Red Sun won that game so that they'll think that letting the Re Raymaker reset was a good choice. I hope they watch this back later and hear how angry I am at them right now uh, so they know that it wasn't a good choice. If they have any questions, feel free to DM me. You have real disappointed teacher energy right now. I, I just want you to hear that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good. <laughs> I am disappointed. I am their dad and I am disappointed. Well. Um, uh, end of this game happens. I mean, when I you're like trying the to attempt it, at a right hand. Like, I like the attempt at the right hand push, but if you're trying to push it regardless, you just have to fight through so many things. And if one thing doesn't go your way, like, an inkjet still get, being able to get used and popped up into the sky, then it, it's kind of GG and kind of over, but yeah. uh, valiant effort yeah. nonetheless. And so they definitely not, weren't going to break through on the left, so I appreciate the attempt at the yeah. right. Yeah, that's true. They did what they had to, they did what they could. Almost worked. Clam Blitz, Chronicle and Dime. First clams map we've seen since talking about the clams. Uh, my, my padlocks. <laughs> Podlocks, but yes. <laughs> I actually like uh, Clams, Barnacle, and Dime uh, quite a bit. I think like Barnacle and Dime is a very lockout heavy map, like we were talking about earlier in Zones. But Clam Blitz, the nature of the mode being so mobile, makes it so you can't just lock out. You have to keep moving to go grab clams and keep things mobile. And, and because of that, it eliminates that problem entirely. It actually Pretty makes soon. the map play well. Pretty soon, you're gonna make this sound like we're playing in the room, or, or playing the 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 room like puzzle game, because <laughs> there's a bunch of locks everywhere. Uh huh. Lockouts. Mm -hmm. Odd locks, padlocks. Yeah. You you do you know what I'm talking? You know what I'm talking? Yes. Like, okay. <laughs> I'm opting to ignore you. <laughs> okay. Well. That's, you know what that's that's about <laughs> i get ignored very often me too that's fine seriously though i'll say a joke and like let's take sonder call for example mm -hmm. i'll say a joke and one person will laugh at me usually and, i get and, like and, those and, really and, loud and fake the, laughs and the other and the rest of them will be silent <laughs> just just yeah. utter silence yeah. Usually I'll get like a, a one or two people will like do the really loud fake laugh and then like right. one person will go, oh, okay. <laughs> and yeah. then, then that's all I really need. Hey, I've right? heard that one before. Right? That's all I really need though. Just a little acknowledgement that I've made them suffer. Yeah. It's fine. Devil's Duke on either side now. Ooh, Not yeah. the ear. Yeah, and pencil now on the side or of Or Zookas. <laughs> Instead of on the side of control. Interesting. How cool is this? Thrilling um, and interactive gameplay. Here we go. You see the, the, the Zookas come out already. Dear goodness. Okay, <laughs> bam. You didn't have to do that to them. You really did. Yeah, they did. Well. They didn't lock the phone. This is fine. Or just... Anyways, on uh, this just, map... Just, I think you're just going to be disappointed in control for the rest of the yeah. eternity. You're not disappointed point. enough, so I'm leaning into it. I'm not disappointed <laughs> enough. No. Uh, this map, the way it plays on Clam Blitz, is a little bit like... Earlier we were talking about the two-pronged pushes. 
Was that earlier? Did I talk about that yesterday? That's a good question. <laughs> Anyways, two prong pushes. So you have to do this in two stages. You kind of have to push to take this top left area, that red sun, not red sun, that's sweet to you. No, that is red sun. Red sun is currently occupying. <laughs> and then you have to push again to take control of that basket area, because by the time you've taken that top left area, most of the people are respawning. Looks like red sun did that. They did that first stage, now they've done the second stage, and they're doing pretty well at holding that second stage, except they don't have very many clams left. So the basket's going to close and they're going to have to do it all over, over again. Um, hopefully, the hopes really are here that they don't lose this first stage and they manage instead to hold this first stage to reduce some of that work that they're back to you. And uh, there's the Zuka. So never mind. There's the Zuka. Yeah, so much about your holding the first stage. <laughs> My try Zuka has something to say about that. Uh, Hermit, though, goes for an interesting play. Tries to come up the backside and... The rest of Sweet Tooth does not meet them uh, to make the engagement and make the pincer attack fully work. So, looks like Bam's still going to be sticking around pretty far forward here on this top side. And we'll see if Sweet Tooth can actually find the second collapse. Junkie up in the air with the zip gas is going to get taken down. And now all of a sudden it's another three down situation with the specials getting used. And an unfortunate order of operations. Red Sun going to roll right on back through. Now Grim once again up in this inkjet and here comes the claim basket opening another two down situation cooler not online while one zuka might be momentarily it's still going to allow for more claims to come in from in control they'll go down three and it will stop at the 39 point mark one of the advantages here of red sun holding onto that first stage that top left area is that they haven't been actively locking clam pods on their half of the map but by virtue of never going back there, they essentially locked the clan pods, <laughs> which allowed a, quite a few more spawns on the side of the map they were actually occupying, which is you know, what we want to see, but I'd, I'd, I'd rather see it a little bit more deliberately. Uh, it looks like Day not Daybreak. Yeah, Daybreak doing a fantastic job here with Sweet Tooth, finally getting into this stage one over on the left-hand side here. Uh, they are going to be able to take a few out, just the cooler of no Zookas coming in just yet, and they're at actively challenging this stage two are going to get taken out by Azuka. Unfortunately, three players down means we're back to stage zero. Good hold for the defense here. Coming through from Red Sun, popping their specials and again, critically identifying some targets that they want to hit. You saw the trades continue to get exchanged and eventually we're able to get taken down. Now, here comes another Zuka. Aim for that left side. You mentioned this stage one. Now it sets up the crossfire for this to go right back. Three down once more for Sweet Tooth. And Red Sun might have another opportunity to make a push in, but no, not this time. The football carrier gets taken down. Nico, kind of caught out in the open space without much teammate support, is also going to be a very easy target. And the Sweet Tooth hold will happen this time, but they've got 54 seconds left to play to get a full push going with two full special rotations, and they just can't quite seem to do it on their own side of the map. Honestly, they're struggling very, very hard in this composition. I think the just pure aggression coming out of Red Sun on top of the the ball point and just some really, really unfortunate Zuka picks. It's just keeping them pretty well locked down. It looks like Red Sun did opt to lose a little bit of control here on the right hand side on Sweet Tooth's top area just to kind of hold their stage one on this left hand side opting to uh, play a little bit more on the defensive with their range in these last 12 seconds. It looks like it's working so far for them. Bam coming in a little bit more on the aggro, gonna push some people while they're not quite expecting it. Hermit, they're caught with their pants down, unfortunately, and that is a full wipe, essentially, and two balls in. That is game for Red Sun. Moving on to winner's finals. Commanding there for Red Sun in a lot of ways. Certainly, I think, in recent memory from what I've observed of this team, feels like Red Sun is better than their peers on Clams. You, mm. I don't know whether or not Clams is our best mode, but I can certainly say that they look like they are consistently the better team that can find ways to work together uh, and, and, and keep on coming through in a lot of these ways. I mean, how do you even fight against this at the very end of the game with Azuka's coming out all together feels 
near impossible there at the end of the game. So hats off to them, of course. No uh, no surprise that they'll be making their way on to winner's finals and will solidify themselves a podium spot here uh, in this Proving Grass tie. Yeah. 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 It looks like they're going to be going up against Free Glue Gunner as well. Um, yeah. Very interesting. 3 2 Free Glue Gunner against Foams. Um, that, man, I, I would have killed to see that match. A 3 2 against those two teams. But it looks like that was a hard fought. We might see Foams again in Grands. I uh, can always hope at the very least. But uh, Free Glue Gunner and in control. Interesting will be interesting for sure and we'll be bringing you that match on the other side of this break so don't go anywhere folks it'll be this free glue gunner team that's made a run since we've watched them in round two versus in control red sun we'll see you in just a few Hello, everybody, and welcome back to 
Truman really? Grabs. <laughs> I had to try. No, okay. <laughs> because my oh. name is Tim Lily. k back here. We're all back from our break. Hopefully, y'all had a, a, a really quick Lily. pee break. You got up and stretched your legs. You're not doing it right. I'm... <laughs> Hello, friends, and welcome back! <laughs> the Proving Grounds 23. I, Popcorn, where's the drama? I have an ASMR voice. There's no drama. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta start a little quieter, and then oh. you build up to the back. <laughs> I thought I did. Well, I didn't start low enough. Of, I didn't start low You enough. also That's didn't start with hello, friends. That's true. Maybe they're not my friends. Yeah. Well. Maybe they're my best friends. Uh, if every single one of Popcorn's viewers were his friend there would be problems, and we'd call that a parasocial relationship. That's probably true. From the depths of my my soul is very shallow, Popman, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not very There's deep. not a lot there. It's the not. soul box is also compressed because you know, shorter. <laughs> Listen, it's fine. It's fine. I someday, maybe I'll try. I'll keep practicing. Maybe yeah. next time. Maybe next time I'll have it. Can we gamble? Also, oh. can you guys please gamble? Hang on, I'm on I'm it, blood. I'm on it. I will not 11, be gambling. vote. Still want to participate. There we go. I'll give my points away to chat. Um, you can't take those yeah, channel I, I points to hell with you. And my mom, okay, so my mom has said that when she dies, my mom, my mom does like beading and jewelry stuff with a bunch of Sure. Beads and stuff. It's fine. Anyways, yeah. she said that when she dies, she wants to be buried with a bunch of just the prettiest beads she has, so that like in a thousand years, an archaeologist dig her up, they'll be like, "Man, this woman must have been like an empress or something." <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, but if you're if you're buried with like in a cemetery, yeah, yeah, with a bunch of other people. And you're just throwing a bunch of them and you have some. Yeah, we could just do it in our backyard not. or something, though. Right. But then you wouldn't be like. There wouldn't be any other monument or anything. And we so could make be one. like a, a tomb. My dad said in nature. that when right he dies, you should just prop him up in the corner with a beer. Like, <laughs> like weekend at whatever. Jerry's? Terry's? Benny's. I don't know about that one. Anyways, <laughs> the contrast to my parents. Anyways, <laughs> into this Popcorn's next game. favorite map <laughs> for game one. What, where did my coughing fit come from today? I don't. Uh, I made you laugh too hard. It's fine. <laughs> Getting right back into a TC ink bot. Uh, not a whole lot unusual here. We see those duallys coming back out from 5th gen, so we do have that crab back, which is going to be interesting against the double zooka from Red Sun. I was Sun. about to say. <laughs> yeah, we'll the, have to see how that, that plays crab, out. That crab going to be having a lot of value against double zooka. Uh, possibly here. Uh, sorry, that was that was sarcasm. But anyway, mm -hmm. Free Glue Gunner looks to try to come on up here, but they're going to get taken down two down. We see Blob hop on top of the tower, but now is probably going to back on away and look for the re-engagement here with the Inkjet. Now the Free Glue Gunner has just decided to swarm them and basically run right back in after losing the first engagement. Blob will still get taken down on the recall of this Inkjet, and it looks like the tower won't be able to clear past this first year. Not quite yet, but Free Blue Gunner is still in full control of mid, one player down on Red Sun, no real specials just yet. So it does look like they are going to get to this first checkpoint, if not past it. And Zuka, never mind. <laughs> Zuka coming in, three down, Blob backing up just to get back on the uh, defense. Bam said no, no ma'am, thank you Bam. Just never mind. <laughs> yep. That's the one. Yep. That's the ticket. Yeah. Uh, here comes the Inkjet and the Zuka, followed by the double Zuka. See, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Follow in with the Inkjet, then pop the Zuka, looking at the enemy spawn. Doesn't actually come up with any value because it was slightly mistimed, thanks to the fact that everyone else was already taken care of. But now Freak Luke Gunner, with apparently no fears, storms right back into the bat side the second that all the specials go down. And are now looking to encapsulate and swarm this tower looking relatively successful in doing so, though not after In Control is able to clear past the second checkpoint. And, yeah, 
honestly, that second checkpoint is important, but not do or die. Uh, definitely. It's the, definitely the third checkpoint of this map that's do or die. Uh, now, that said, we still need to get in mid. <laughs> and unfortunately, it looks like this right hand side is proving very difficult for Free Food Gunner. Just the members of Red Sun just dropping right back into mid, fully able to take control and get some picks off the side. All juiced up and ready to go. They are going to be trying to take a repush back here. <sighs> I'm just. It's a bloodbath. It's a bloodbath. That. You'll have that. Here we go, coming forward. It's now Red Sun once more. Blob up in the air with the Ink Jet, trying to utilize the extra height advantage off of this uh, little perch here. Now it's going to get taken down to the suction bomb thrown on the recall. But here comes Grim, coming up with two and looking to continue escorting Red Sun for the zoo. The cooler goes up on the bad side as the rest of Red Sun really prioritizes that. But it looks like Luke Hunter once again runs at bats, prevents Red Sun from actually getting set up there and establishing themselves. And this push will falter as a result once more. So far, what I've seen from Free Glue Gunner is they do have the best defensive retakes in that bats area. They do a fantastic job just pushing Red Sun out and, and reclaiming that ground. Uh, we just need to see a little bit more of that coming up in mid, which is proving difficult when your crab goes down, <laughs> you know? Yeah, a little difficult. I will say the one saving grace for uh, fifth gen's crab tank is that neither one of the members of Red Sun are running object shredder. Mm -hmm. so. Fair, and they do Some have to commit that right. Zuka to it. So, you know, I, if a special true. eats another special, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah. Not that's what I mean. That's what bubbles for. Right? Typically favors the uh, defensive team, though, right? Because the offensive yes. team is trying to push it, but actually exactly. push in and get some value with the special. Um, but in any event, looks like this push will start to falter as it turns around the first check. Nico pops this Zuka. Doesn't really have a target. Just gonna get picked out of the air. Uh, from Blob here, but now two down as Red Sun uh, has found a way to collapse on this from the opposite side of the map, coming through mid, and now the Ink Jet's up in the air once again. Grim takes care of Fissus once more, and with 30, about 30 seconds left to play here, Red Sun's gonna get back on top of the tower, look towards Bats one more time, and prevent Blue Gunner from doing much of anything, although FF <laughs> Candy right back down to this bottom side. Now it looks like the cleanup crew is coming through. And uh, doing a pretty good job of it, too. Um, we are still 15 seconds left in this game. We're starting into the danger zone. Free Glue Gunner are doing a really good job on defense, but struggling to get any kind of offense going means that they're going to be going into this maybe with overtime. Two members down, maybe able to touch that tower. Not no. quite, unfortunately. That game is going to go to Red Sun. It was pretty... Oh, it was it was a bloodbath uh, from both sides, really, and the defense they saw from Free, Free Blue Gunner really was quite good. So I think now that they know to expect a double Zuka, now that they know to expect the kind of aggression that's coming out of Red Sun, they can probably adapt to that uh, in the maps coming. We'll, we'll have to see. Uh, I am very curious to see what happened, or what's going to happen in terms of annotations here, but the hypothesis I have for Free Glue Gunner right now uh, in this team of maybe not entirely unknown characters, but certainly not commonplace top four Proving Grounds names at all, uh, is I have to imagine uh, the way they're playing the game right now is kind of just no fear of running in. Yeah. And a lot of times it's just kind of working because it's the last thing that some of these more practice teams expect. Right. You don't expect two members to just run at you on bats while you're trying to get set up literally the second as your Zuka ends. Right. Mm -hmm. you, and I mean, you don't expect some of these other things to happen. And so I have to imagine that Free Glue Gunner has been relying on that to get them to this point in the tournament. Right. Where they continue just running in and being the unexpected in terms of pace. Uh, but now it feels like they're catching themselves out in a lot of, you know, 1v3s versus Red Sun because they're trying to go for some random flank angle that doesn't work. And Red Sun is such a well-coordinated team in general that that's just not going to happen. Yeah, and I mean, Red Sun is a team of very, very talented mechanical players, which is allowing them a certain amount of momentum and uh, mind control. <laughs> 
<laughs> that, that free control. glue gunner. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. Just, the just mind the control allegations. The, the fear that you can lose any fight you take is, is strong. Uh, I mean, all of that said, free gunner's doing fantastic right off the bat on this one. They are probably going to get this first check and potentially a little bit further than that. So it looks like Red Sun really just lost that first engagement and things are going a little south. Little cell phone ready, but it looks like the specials aren't able to find much value for Free Blue Gunner here. Now, fifth gen comes up with one. Here comes the hammer. Looks like Azuka trade's gonna happen, and now the hammer is gonna open up the opportunity for the minute to come slightly forward, but it's not forward enough. There's no one else around. This blob is too far back into mid in order to capitalize on this, and so the Rainmaker will halt at the 59 point mark. Absolutely, and I mean, not a terrible opening. We're yet again in a two down position on either side. Free Blue Gunner still with full control of mid, so they're still very much on the upper hand here. Uh, we'll have to see how long that lasts, but uh, Red Sun, it did look like it was just caught off a little uh, by how quickly Free Blue Gunner moved in that, that opening. Now, looking back over the left side here is in control Red Sun with Prim. And bam, hopping that Zuka finds one for the trouble, but it looks like it's traded on the other side of the map here by the members of Free Glue Gunner who start to come a little bit further forward. But now if Candy gets taken down, so Free Glue Gunner can't quite establish themselves either way. But the unsuspecting Zuka of fifth gen lands onto two, and this will be the opportunity that Free Glue Gunner was looking for. Rainmaker right back up to the elbow here. Fifth Gen tries to roam on forward here and trying to find something on the Bam on this left side who backs away for a moment. Still has Tactical or now looking for this 1v1. Fifth Gen comes out on top, but Nico's up to this right side, preventing this Rainmaker from coming further forward. Krim's gonna come flying in on this left side, also making sure that this Rainmaker just cannot find its way forward. And even despite the infiltration and despite the opening, there's just not the amount of pain on the ground here for this Rainmaker to keep coming through. Finally, maybe an opportunity, but no. Grim's on this right side, poking up on the top of the map, and now Goose will finally run forward, get it down to 47, but there's that inkjet once more. Shuts down the Rainmaker at the 46-point mark, but we've got half more of the game to play, and here comes the Wiper once more for Free Glue Gutter. Looks like it's probably going to get surrounded and taken out here pretty soon, and the push will finally end. But hey, this is exactly what I'm talking about. If you can keep up that pressure and keep up that aggression, even if you trade here or there, Free Glue Gunner will find ways to just make the enemy team look like they weren't seeing it coming at all. Dang. She's very eloquent dang. here, just dang. <laughs> yeah, it looks like at the beginning of the game, we saw quite a lot of uh, very strong team play coming out of Free Glue Gunner that looks like when under pressure falls apart a little bit, um, and uh, we're in control of the sun is, is, you know, staying a little more in control in those uh, tense moments. But uh, that isn't necessarily stopping Free Blue Gunner from holding this control. They're still doing a fantastic job. They still have full control of mid and Red Sun has barely touched the Rainmaker with only a minute and a half left in the game. This definitely puts them in a fantastic position for the rest of this, but I, you never want to be on the defense for this long. Was just got about taken down by a bomb there, and so <laughs> was middle Zuka taken out. And won't have that resource for a little while longer. Now gets taken down yet again, and Red Sun only has one Zuka online. Here's Krim's inkjet as well, which has been putting in a lot of pressure, but will elect to jump away almost instantly the second that Nico goes down, trying to preserve these specials for as long as possible to make a push happen. But here comes Free Blue Gunner once more, picking up this Rainmaker, and now Krim's gonna pop this inkjet trying to find something. Finds one, and now the second with the Rainmaker down there on the bottom right side. That Rainmaker is going to be pesky to get to and to take to the other side of the map uh, for Red Sun in order to secure this game. 30 seconds left on the clock puts Red Sun in a terrible position and the Rainmaker and Free Glue Gunner in a great one. They still have massive control of mid. 20 seconds left. Special starting to come out. The Soda going to help eliminate some of the consequences of those Zookas coming in now as well as that Inkjet. But man, that's a lot of specials we're going to have to burn just to take control of the zone and mid and get that Rainmaker. Six, five seconds left. They managed to touch and will trigger that overtime, but how long are they gonna be able to keep it? Not very long by the looks of it as FM Candy finds 
At least one member on the trade here, though two go down for free glue gunner. This will enable Krim to start coming forward here. But it's only to the back side of mid. Not enough space has been cleared out. And now we see the Wiper drop over to the right side of the map, rushing down Krim. But we see Beam rotate over to try to capitalize on this. There's the Rainmaker shot to secure that pick. Two down situation right now for Free Glue Gunner, who are still throwing everything they've got the Rainmaker. Here comes the point blank Zuka that's able to find the second shot. And Free Glue Gunner will take game two in our winner's finals. Dang. Dang. Good stuff. <laughs> Honestly, I, I think that was just the adjustment they needed. Free Glue Gunner took that first game. They read red sun and then uh they're like okay we know what to do Good was adjustment. red red supposed uh, to be something no it wasn't intentional i kind of just happened and i was like oh yeah. well we'll just move with it maybe they'll think it was an on-purpose pun and it was actually good it wasn't good but we could pretend right I'm so surprised that Zuka got them. I was, I swore that that last Zuka shot was just gonna get completely taken by pedestal, but man, did a fantastic job. Well, one game apiece here for these two squads. And again, it just feels like Red Sun could never get anything fully set up. Right. I said they spent so many resources just trying to retake mid and would yeah. go so many down that they couldn't hold the ground they took. You know what map they did look really good on earlier, though? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to see that bit of a replay here with a different team plan. Blitz Barnacle and Dime coming up next. Going to put us back in. We'll have to see if uh, Glue Gunner can keep up this pace and this adjustment they've made or if red sun will just come out on top feels like though as you as you talked about at length when we saw this moment <laughs> uh the fact that you kind of need to win two team fights very critically in order to actually get under this basket probably means that free glue gunner is not gonna have very many opportunities to find a push if they keep playing the same way they have been where they're playing very individualistic they're playing to try to play for trades all the time uh they're really going to need to find this coordinated effort here and of course back on that double zuka composition will be hopefully looking to do that in addition now to the slosher coming out with the tri strikes but on the flip side of that we're seeing nico pull out the 52 gal here as well very interesting pick i'm intrigued to see how this plays out we're already two down on the side of blue gunner with a very commanding hold on mid for red sun as they just push this aggro angle so hard already a ball going they already have the stage one of this map and are already pushing for stage two this is an incredibly fast moving composition here comes the killer whale to try to keep this pressure alive but it can't quite take the top left of the map now fm candy dropping nico looks for the pick and is going to be able to find it with the help of a teammate two down now for free glue gunner and red sun has the opportunity to move forward here's Krim and the ink jet again up in the sky looking for another member and now we'll find that one on the fifth gen it'll back on away down to 54 now for red sun bam got a couple plans looking to throw these in and now it's down to 45 beam rotated back in mid now has a few more and a beautiful clam spawn location over to the right side means that bam's gonna come back to throw in just a few more look at how well they're able to rotate these members around in order to keep adding more clams to the score and they'll get the push opening down to 27. Candy there getting that final push to open up mid. We are going to be moving forward fairly quickly as we try to take this stage one on the left hand side. It does look like they're lacking a little bit in the paint in mid, trying to not lose that momentum they've already built. But as the Zuka coming out getting no picks means that we're still off to the races. The Inkjet coming out as well. Not quite finding anything on that either, but two down went with the cover of the inkjet really was the benefit there, not necessarily the inkjet itself. Up to his left side, exactly where Beam wants to be, but of course doesn't want to commit everything for the team, and now we're starting to see the collapse of the push come through. 
some of the members of Red Sun start backing away smartly. Again, you're noticing how they're all backing away together. They're not having one person stick around. They elect to all come back in the mid and now punish 5th Gen for going a little bit too far forward. Right back into the action. Bam starts to get here, uh, forces one member to drop down into the drink, and now another will jump away. Red Sun reestablish this themselves up on this top left of the map by giving space to the enemy team and looking for the re-engagement and finding those picks when the enemy team got a little bit too eager. We really are seeing the difference between, um, I guess, a pickup and a team here. The the very coordinated plays, the specials pop to cover each other. Uh, Things coming out in, in coordination and people moving up together very much proving to be the difference on this map. As you were saying earlier, having to push this into a two-stage push is difficult to maintain if you don't have the coordination necessary. Krim, they're getting, what, three in a row with that, uh, with some shots and some ink jets, and they are, it looks like, going to be able to open up this basket yet again. Will this be the knockout, though? They've already eliminated their penalty. Might be the case. Bam's got a Zuka now looking for something here. It's only the Snipe Raider online, and so Bam will get these couple in. We see Nico come forward, pick up a couple, and now there are just a couple more back as well. But I think Red Sun might elect to give this one away, and indeed they do. Beam was rotating all the way back, looking for the power claim to find the knockout blow, but now has one up here on this stack. Going to be looking to find the re-engagement in the moment as soon as these specials come back online. But Free Glue Gunner tries to make a resurgence. They try to use all of their specials to dive in, but they're only finding one for now as Red Sun's back all the way on their side of the map and the push starts to collapse here for them. It's two down for Free Glue Gunner and Red Sun once again gives so much space just to find the re-engagement in the counter blow. That's honestly exactly how they played it earlier, too. They gave up a ton of space to maintain a better position, which uh, made me nervous at the time. But here, they're just doing it so incredibly well that it's hard for Blue Gunner to get any kind of momentum or any kind of footing in this game. Um, they approach that stage one and then have to end up backing up all the way again. And it's just over and over again. Players like Bam coming and getting some fantastic picks. Uh, with or without specials <laughs> to just maintain this ground and the pressure. It looks like we're going to get an overtime, but without control of mid and so little time to cross a very large map and, and open the basket in time, two players yeah. down, this overtime yeah. isn't really going anywhere. This game is in the bag, Shirez. Once again, another dominant performance from Red Sun on Clam Blitz, Barnacle, and Dime. Uh, <laughs> this team has got this map down to a science, or so it feels, in terms of the way they've been able to move around, the way they were able to continue giving space. And again, it all goes back to the synergy that's inherent in this roster. It all goes back to their ability to listen to one another, back away when they know they need to, and then find the proper timing for a specific re-engagement back the other way. And now they're sitting pretty looking to send themselves up to grand finals. Mm. This next map, though, I think they have a perhaps a better chance. We did see them play really well on Raymaker. And I think Zones Makamar has a potential to play the same way. It, it doesn't require that same two stage in the same way that uh, Clams, Barnacle, and Dime, or even Tower Control often can. So one really good push really can make the game for them. Um, if, if they can pull that back together, they might have a game five on their hands, but I don't really like their chances on Tower Control Manta. I don't really... Yeah, tower control banta sounds like it's <laughs> not makes me nervous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's alright. There's always a chance. Never say never. It's absolutely always a chance. Absolutely. And uh, the longer we go, the more chances they have for adjustment. So, uh, honestly, I, I won't count them out yet at all. Uh, I think we, I mean, we still have to worry about our first game first, so Snow's Mako Mart is definitely the next challenge we're going to have to face. First, I'ma say all the words <laughs> inside my head. 
It is karaoke night. Man, it's awesome. Six to seven to eight says, I remember when Candy saved my family of five from a burning building at 4.27 a.m. on a Thursday. Hey, hats off. Not all heroes wear capes. <laughs> some of them wear candy. Well, <laughs> some of them wear plastic. Plastic wrappers. Oh, that took me a second. Yeah. I was like, yeah. plastic? Yeah. Raincoat? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. boy. Listen, y'all must be so excited. We've been a little silly here. Like, uh, things have been a little wacky in a while. So, uh, <laughs> k is tired. I'm me. I'm tired. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, soon y'all will get to hear some professional commentators. That's <laughs> true. To carry y'all home with yeah. some really exciting games. For, you Pop just gotta Gun. put up with this a little while longer. <clears throat> Pop Gun's actually going to. Uh, Pop Gun's in both of our walls right now, and he's actually gonna do the little like hook thing, where they just where he yanks us away from our microphones, and that makes room for the next pair of commentators to come after this set. Because otherwise, I don't think either one of us would move. We'd just sit here and keep yapping. Uh, oh, that's probably true. Yeah. That's probably true. I, I'm questioning how Pop Gun is in both our roles simultaneously, though. It's Pop Gun, what do you expect? Ah, oh, fair. Actually, pretty sure that's a superpower you get when you're a dad. To be in people's walls simultaneously across country borders? Yes. Well. Alright. Kind of impressed. <laughs> yeah. Pop Gun, when's the baby gonna wear the onesie? It was a funny thing, like I got those onesies and I was like, man, this onesie is so small. And then uh, I was talking to some friends and I'm like, yeah, that baby won't be able to wear the onesie until it's like six months in. And I'm like, you're kidding, right? <laughs> it's already so small. How could it be smaller? I don't understand. <laughs> but you know, what can you do? I might have outgrown it already and you didn't take a picture? Wow. Pop gun. Pop gun. I'm disappointed. Yo, Pop Gun, I be put on commentary. Not with that grammar. <laughs> Incredible. Gained a power to detect poop better. I don't know if I'd want. Well, do I want that power? Because, like, on the one hand. No. But on the other hand, wouldn't no. you want to know if it was in your vicinity? No. You really don't. <laughs> It depends where you live. Like, if you can have the power to detect, detect poop better and you live in the city, I might not want that. I might want that. But if I live no. in the country, I don't want that because I assume that counts for, like, animal poop. Right. And there's already cows. You, I know there's poop tell you, there. Those cows stink. They do. So imagine if you just, like, smelled that twice as more effectively or something. But, I mean, he did say detect and not smell. So maybe he just has like a, like a ping. Right, it's a You know, like, you know, like in Legend of Zelda when they have like a shrine sensor on and it's just like- My poop senses tingle. <laughs> like what? If you live naked in the forest and relied on hunting wild animals to survive, it might be useful. That's true. But you might also want the potential to detect- This is a like lot of hypotheticals. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Like I think if you lived maybe. naked in the forest, you would need a lot more things to go your way than uh, having a poop sense. Do we have any word on what's taking this game so long? Oh, yeah. Um, elemental. You want to hold for a minute for an IRL thing. Yeah. yeah. So give me like three minutes. Yeah, I yeah. should have seen that message. <laughs> Five and you didn't. Oh. I looked at it and then and I started I a conversation about weird things to keep the tad in right. How's it going, chat? <laughs> well. And k -Bot's like, let's air all of our production stuff. <laughs> oh, what? That's not even... k -Bot's like, I'm going to tell you all the stuff behind the scenes to make the, the cast look unprofessional. Well, I didn't... 
I don't even know what I said, but I don't even know that I referred to who had the thing uh -huh, to do. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. This is all K-Bot's fault, clearly. Everything's always my fault. Yeah. It's just Lily a fun trick in, for life. You know, you, know, you know, chat, the first thing that Lily came in and said that I, we haven't talked and I don't know how long. First thing Lily comes in is says, uh, what, what map were you complaining about? You were complaining about some map. And you said, oh, it must be K-Bot's fault. And I go, yes, because I am the sole proprietor of all tournament map lists right now. Yeah. It's just a fun trick for life, y'all. You know, if something's going wrong and you like need to blame someone, but you can't blame anybody, just blame K-Bot. It works really well. And I was into the Max, game. Max, bold of you to assume we're going to talk about the game. <laughs> we are going to be seeing At this point, the, the I just want to not coming. talk about the game to spite oh, okay. Max specifically. We're just going to talk about poop more? Like is that... Well, maybe not that. Oh! <laughs> See, this is why we don't talk about the game, because you're just going to get lit up by Zook anyway, so... Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. We are gonna see that uh, the gal come out again. Very interesting. It must have felt like it worked for them last time instead of the double super. So you know, thumbs up emoji. And in return, we see like the reduction of Zuga and Blue Gunner into sloshers, which I kind of love. Kind of love. I that. do like the the slosher angle. Right, it's yeah. Kumar after all, of course, dry slosher, uh, notoriously powerful here. In addition, that slosher, no slouch either. But we'll see whether or not these uh, strikes actually come online and actually play useful to the hands of Free Glue Gunner, who's playing this very individual style and looking to continue rolling forward. But for right now, it's Red Sun rushing on in. You see one person going forward and getting that trade with Krim trying to support in that inkjet. Now forced to recall back, but looks like Red Sun giving a little bit of space on four. They went so far forward, baited out some of the specials and resources, and now Red Sun has retreated back around this zone. But here comes Glue Gunner. Strikes come out first. They're able to find one, and now they sweep through the zone. Well done in this retake, but now will they be able to find the stabilization? There's a flank behind you. I don't think they know. They have their headphones on. It's fine. Oh, no. <laughs> that was like, like, Blob, take us care of that pretty quickly. And they do manage to get that cap on zone with the extended penalty, but they manage to lose it, unfortunately, the members of Red Sun coming back in. Now, this really all comes down to, like we were saying earlier, they weren't as strong on those two prong pushes, but they've been doing fantastic on the singular ones. So if they can manage to do that again and potentially hold on to it a little bit longer, that would be super nice. Please, as a gift for me. Um, <laughs> but otherwise, two down on the side of Blue Gunner, members of Red Sun pushing up quite aggressively as we near some specials as well. Uh, things are looking a little dire. Makes me nervous. It's a little bit dire overall, but hey, they've got an opportunity here, though not with Krim and the Inkjet up in the sky super high. Now it's going to get one person away and Getting one onto FM Candy. It's two down now for Free Glue Gunner. And a couple ticks left here for in control. Red Sun means that they are going to set themselves up for Grand Final. Zuko, one last Hail Mary effort. It gets almost enough ink onto the zone, but it's not quite enough with the additional paint coming through from Red Sun. And indeed, they will secure the set victory. Okay, unfortunately, we were seeing some really good coordination coming out from Blue Gunner in that one, but Red Sun just had that momentum, and they were like, nah, we're going to Grands, that's fine. We'll see if Blue Gunner can come back in. They are going to be dropping down. It is double a limb, so they are going to be dropping down into the loser side of Bracket and uh, have a potential to make it all the way back up to retake this fight. They are going to have to fight their way through a few first, uh, so we'll have to see if they can beat either Fly CZ or Foams 22 uh, before they come back through, but until then... It, well... I was about to say, if you've been watching this tournament so far, you would think that we were just doing a pretty standard uh, top four double elimination bracket uh, because we've seen the same like five teams all tournament. But instead, we're not doing that. It is a small double elim bracket tonight, and we're about to send it over uh, to our next set of casters. Lily, always a pleasure. Where can the good people find you? Oh, I'm really easy. You can find me at Splatoon Lily on pretty much everywhere, Twitch. Twitter, Blue Sky. I'm on all those. It's pretty easy. Uh, and K-Bot? Yeah, same thing. 
Uh, nah. Kibbit underscore 273 on Twitch and X. <laughs> eh, Twitter. It's fine. But yeah, we say we, that every time. We had a blast. Uh, we were a little wacky and wild. Hopefully, y'all had a little bit of fun here. Maybe learned some stuff. Hopefully. I went on a couple of rants. So, you know, it couldn't have been that bad. And uh, if you're looking for something think- a little bit more... Uh, yeah. Shockingly, you went on more rants than I tonight. I know, it's wild. I had to pick yeah. up the slack. You're tired tonight, so. That's true. Yeah. Tired so, and surprisingly I mean, not very grumpy. Yes. Yes. So I, I took that over for k tonight, but we're going to send you all over to uh, Fusion and Devi, who will bring you a really great show for Losers Finals and Grands, of course, and hopefully Bracket Reset. Just, you know, putting it out there. That would be really exciting. And, um,. Yeah, I hope y'all have a fantastic night and a fantastic Friday the 13th. Have a good night, everybody.
Welcome back, everybody. We've got Proving Grounds top three now. Uh, we are in Losers Finals. We've got Free Glue Gunner, who you just saw in uh, Winners Finals, versus Foam 22 uh, Sequoia Offshoot. Uh, it seems at this point I am joined here tonight by Devi. It's uh, so much fun to uh, see you again, Devi, and it's a pleasure to cast with you. How are you tonight on this lovely Friday? I am doing pretty good. I just uh, came up from spectating uh, a scrim, helping them prepare for their looty match, and now I'm here uh, on the other side of Proving Grounds, because usually I'm either playing or asleep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. uh, we're finally on the other side, and, and like like I told Fusion as soon as we got in here, Fusion found the Hydra finally, because there, there was a, <laughs> a line that was said at, at LTC 2022 that I will never forget, so... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, going going into the this this game here of, of Freak Glue Gunner and Foams Twenty Two, uh, they played earlier in the bracket actually, and uh, the set went three two, uh, so this should be a solid one. And we're going on, of course, the good old classic on Zones Mako. Oh yeah, and uh, we've got the funky comp that uh, Foams Twenty Two was running earlier in the tournament. Uh, not quite three of my main. They I, they, I remember they used to play like three of my mains and Zap, uh, or something like that in Splat Two. Uh, but now we've got Zap, Carbon, Blob, and Machine, and Free Free Glue, free glue Gunner is going to be running it down. They put their they brought out that Wiper again, which they saw some success with against Red Sun uh, here on Mako Zones, but both teams still uh, wondering what to do, trying to find an opening here. The rain creating so much space in the middle of the map, but the Suction Bomb, along with some shots from Goose, are able to take two, making it an even fight in mid. The Cooler is going to give Free Glue Gunner a bit of an advantage here. The Jet comes out. That is going to solidify some real space for Free, free Glue Gunner as they grab the zone. Mm -hmm. You never want to underestimate these comps that quote-unquote look funky because they always bring out some kind of twist that usually you don't expect. But because these two teams played earlier, they will already kind of have an idea of what could be uh, coming back at them as they are fighting each other again. So you can never underestimate what you're about to go against because we can see it was going back and forth in the zone here. We have specials going back out left and right. The Blob was doing a really good job at controlling the stacks here. We just had the Inkjet go out. We see 5th Gen just going in trying to get a pick here. Does end up getting a trade. It looks like Archer is managing to keep alive here, followed up by the Carbon. We've got three on this side here. Blob is just trying to create a little bit of space. Zone is still ticking down for Free Glue Gunner. And uh, the Rain looks like it's out too. Stamp is going to get ready to go here from the back side. Uh, it looks like it ended up getting shut down and the Rain and the Booyah Bomb able to go forth. And uh, Foams 22 able to recap Zone here. Yeah, they were really fighting uphill that entire time, but managed to stay pretty much entirely alive. Uh, really impressive. They were pushing up that left stack, just kind of stalling until they were able to uh, find some space and those specials. They We saw yet again the rain coming in, creating a lot of space. And 5th Gen, of course, bringing out that tri -Zuka with the shot. That is going to do a lot of damage here as Free Glue Gunner tries to get back into the zone. They're playing a little bit of bullet hell here as... Uh, Free Glue Gunner is going to have a little bit of a difficult time. They need to get through that carbon, and what's going to do that? Nothing but the hammer, which is kind of just a bigger carbon, if you think about it. Maybe, not really. Anyway, this game has been back and forth so far, and uh, Free Glue Gunner is m definitely still in this. Nico with the geometry uh, times two. There was two moments there on stream where we saw Blob Geometry getting the pick here. Uh, down in the freezer, and that is proving very useful here. And uh, there was also a play earlier where there was rain going out. We had another special, and there was just a pinch from behind, and uh, ended up just trying helping out Foams 22 there extend the lead. But Free Glue Gunner able to make it back out with the help of the stamp on the left. Uh, and as they have the zone here, uh, looks like it is being neutralized. Rain at the ready. Zap does go down, as that is one of the primary painters for Foam or for uh, Foams 22. And um, lead has been reclaimed. We see the blob here just trying to push out 5th gen. There is one on the other side, but 5th gen able to knock out that player. So it's still back to the blob trying to go here. But the zone is still in control. About to go down here, and they don't have enough paint to cap it at this moment in time. Not quite enough. Nico in that rain machine is not enough to grab back the zone. Uh, Free Glue Gunner just consistently finding those picks, not falling victim to the to the kind of rinse and repeat that uh, 
uh, Foams 22 just kept putting out. It felt like they were definitely waiting till they had all of that paint to move in. They had a difficult time really clearing out those ledges. We saw uh, like 5th Gen sharking under there, able to find uh, a pick or two and just stalling for so long. There were so many times there where it felt like Foams 22 might have had an opportunity to get in and just any step forward they took, it just got smothered. We saw Vera on the carbon flanking around that left gets shut down by FM as well as that inkjet. Uh, and just good awareness overall from Free Glue Gunner playing a little bit of a, a slower game there. Yeah, they were uh, just looking around there and the, you could see kind of like the fights in the corners, like they really uh, used the alleys to the advantage there, uh, just getting out of the way from uh, the range pick as they could. And they also uh, picked off the primary painter uh, at some key moments there. I saw the zap go down uh, twice, I think, in moments where um, Foams 22 definitely, <laughs> definitely needed it to get back into zone there. So they really uh, took back out that one painter uh, and just couldn't uh, find the pick in return to make it even to put more uh, pressure onto the zone. But Foams 22 did have some really solid pinch plays there in Freezer. You could see how the blob locked out uh, behind the blocks there, just pushing them back in a corner. And another member of Foams 22 would come in from behind uh, and pick one off, pinching in between. So both these teams uh, do have a solid neck and neck play throughout uh, with what they're working with here even if one isn't like what you would see traditionally yeah here we go already hopping into game two right back into it on tc manta much bigger map we do indeed see a backline coming out from nico this time it's going to be the pencil that is going to supply some tacticalers to the team comp uh, which may be uh, playing kind of into what they're planning on here. We've got uh, the Carbon as well, which wants to just move in, get those picks as quickly as possible. And it seems like uh, uh, Free Glue and I are sticking with what works at this point. The Wiper seems to be paying dividends for them. The Hammer able to kind of shut down some of those corners that they otherwise were having difficulty uh, clearing. And the flank early in the game may make it a little bit difficult for Foams22 to get control of mid. We see them all the way behind. The Hammer is going to wreak havoc. That takes out Nico. It takes out one more. It takes out <laughs> Archer. It goes down in the process. <laughs> but three whole kills. Ah, ah. And that is going to be an early first push for Glue Gunner. Bravo with the stamp play there. That was pretty solid. And also there was a early uh, Zuka play that was trying to happen, but also got shut down um, at the beginning there. So able to get three there, but not able to get to the checkpoint as Phobos 22 just back in um, in free Gulu Gunner's faces and just able to go forward here. They could probably um, push back this first checkpoint here, but a lot of them are in the street and Bishop's just ready up on top. We see the inkjet appearing with one trying to follow up and a torpedo also down. You can see Candy trying to apply some poke with the wiper and the Zuka does come out trying to find a pick. Zuka back and forth here, but two down end up happening on the side of free glue gunner and uh, Foams22 here wants to take the tower and uh, go back forward, but the hammer back out again here. Yeah, it really feels like Foams22 does not have an answer for that hammer. It's actually kind of absurd. Uh, and, you know, the machine can't deal with it. The shot and zap get, uh, or sorry, the, yeah, the shots uh, gets outranged by it. The carbon can't really deal with it either. And just all they can really do at this point is hope for a trade out of the situation, which is what they got. But never mind that, because Foams22, despite taking a bit of a rough fight in mid, still makes it through the first check to the second check very cleanly. And now it's Vera hunting for kills, but 5th Gen managing to sneak in, slow that tower before it seems like it's eventually going to get past. That push gets shut down with a full wipe, but uh, not before uh, Foams22 gets a very nice second checkpoint. That is going to be the most difficult check on this map. That is true. They did opt to go for that second checkpoint break, which is pretty good. And from the, with their comp is looking, they are able, they do have a lot of options to be able to hold back here. It looks like they managed to get a pick over on the left hand side. We see the hammer was about to go out, but canceled on the backside. Goose here just trying to dodge around the tower here, but does uh, juice jump out very quickly. And Blob's just going to maintain mid here as uh, Free Glue Gunner just resets uh, as we go back to basically the beginning. Yeah, the wipers on the flank again. 
Uh, Foam22 is wise to it this time. Nico's going to have to jump out. We see the flank did indeed get shut down. So Free Glue Gunner fighting at a bit of a disadvantage in mid here. The Zuka and Booyah forcing Goose all the way back into the street. But uh, the entire team living in the process. That means the fight is going to be on with full cooler uh, in pocket. And Goose going to try and make an opening. Not able to find anything though. It's now FM with that hammer yet again trying to create something. The pencils all that could deal with the hammer at this point. Nico trying to find something but otherwise it feels like fm just kind of has full reign over, over this right side candy just really locking out all of free glue gunner and it will be their worst nightmare if candy's able to get up into the top left there yeah candy's doing a very good job at just like painting around getting uh hammer and going in with at the times and even like launching it at certain times i believe there was a a classic yeet hammer throw that did pick one earlier on the uh, ramp but Foams22 now has uh, two members of Free Glue Gunner down. They can opt to go up and take this space. They have Booyah Bomb at the ready alongside with Zuka. They just have to find where Free Glue Gunner wants to go here and trap them. Yeah, we see Goose pretty much the last resort. They're going to need to get in and get some picks if they want to clear it out. Fifth Gen as well uh, is going to help pinch the tower at that checkpoint. Excellent work, both uh, teams moving in at the same time onto that bunker, just managing to stop the members who are sitting there from protecting that tower push here. And already, Free Glue Gunner back on the offensive. They're going to need to get past this second check with only 30 seconds remain. Vera trying to get away in, not able to find it. The stamp finding yet another victim. Archer down there is going to find, uh, find one and what's an effective trade and that push is going to be dead in the water now with specials like zuka online foams 22 just needs to set up defense here in the last 15 seconds yep they do <laughs> i was like i, I was like do I, do I mention this or let it slide anywho few seconds left to go and candy is on the tower right now with the support of inkjets it looks like vera was trying to go for tower the inkjet is able to help support that the hammer is going to go in and clear street booyah bomb is going to go and return that is a wipeout the hammer managed to find the two in the booyah bomb can they break the checkpoint here cooler is out they're close to breaking checkpoint one is rushing the tower with sprinkler nico tries to get it they managed to take the lead <laughs> oh wow and you can fit all of that in one clip <laughs> incredible <laughs> what a comeback though from free glue gunner uh just <laughs> No time remaining on the clock, managing to get back in uh, and get a wipe in that tower. Uh, that's actually kind of absurd because you can play pretty far back on this map, uh, but it seems like that might have been a, a bit of their, a bit of Foams 22's undoing there. They were just unable to really get in around this corner and just consistently throughout that game, the hammer was doing so much to clear out members of uh, Foams 22. They just were not able to get around corners. They could not approach the hammer, uh, especially since it's on such a mobile weapon like the Wiper. It, it's, it's kind of absurd to see hammer so powerful against a comp, but you really see there what the hammer is capable of, especially in capable hands like Candy's. Yes, and the other thing about this is Candy read it so well because you could see how um, uh, Foams 22, like the Booyah Bomb was trying to be used to stop the tower, right? But there's still, you have to take hit points before you fully go down to that Booyah Bomb. And they were trying to use the Booyah Bomb for cover, but one weakness of it is you can go right through it with any kind of fire or special and still go down. And Candy risked it, uh, assuming that two were going to go through that Booyah Bomb to take tower. And that's exactly what happened and just went right through with it and stop that so the only one they had to stop was nico on that last hurrah uh potential push there and that would have been a miracle uh for the snipe rider to get with the with that sprinkler combo it was set up pretty nicely too uh but they were able to jump on that and of course there was lots of members around the tower and uh what a play at the end of course even starting off with the support of inkjet to be able to get vera off the tower um and just push through to that checkpoint but that hammer through the booyah bomb was very well read <laughs> yeah and that's gonna uh, net free glue gunner a rematch uh in grand finals versus red sun red sun kind of looking unshakable uh throughout most of the tournaments i've seen they've just been you know it, it was like one year ago 
where they were a relatively like lower mid-level team and they've just grinded like crazy x division winning their first week of looty uh i'm not sure what's happened their second week so far but they've just become such a strong team overall and just they don't make that many mistakes you know it, it feels like it's just very difficult to make a dent in them everyone thinks you might be able to get it but it, they're really just so hard to pressure enough to get that opening free glue, glue gunner did manage to uh take a game off them last time though so there may be potential here as we go into game, uh, grand finals which is a best of five I, I said this before, and every time when I get to commentate Red Sun, it's amazing, and they also make me feel old, because, yes, this was, like, a year or two ago, like, we were in similar division, we were in a put-together scrim server with, like, three to four of us teams in the same level, all being kind of, like, uh, like, uh, like two teams reviewing, like, one scrim kind of thing, and um, they have uh, pushed their limits, they've uh, went on the grind there they found uh a, like a like a miniature family red sun has that have the same goals continuing to thrive and i watch them do this also at lands all the time and seeing them just uh do something absolutely spectacular and even seeing like the results of tournaments these days uh and just seeing them up here it, it's so it's so great to see them but red sun you you very much make me feel old <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, time's not real. The last few years have been a little bit fast. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's uh. it's definitely difficult to 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 stay on top of your game for so long when teams can just come up not out of nowhere, but teams can just come up so quickly and mm -hmm. take on like some of the best of the best, like. It, it's kind of absurd, but here we got uh, Free Glue Gunner just making a really crazy run here. Again, they took out the one seed uh, of this tournament, uh, who was a pickup uh, of uh, what Kara, Kaden, and a couple others. That is Zenith and. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I see. Happy Four Twenty. Yeah, they've they've had some crazy wins going into this, so uh, they're just kind of trying to cap this put the cherry on top of their run here because making it all the way two grands uh, against several incredible teams is is already enough of a statement mm -hmm. and now that they've played uh against each other once uh it's kind of the same thing that happened in the last setup here uh you could see how um uh, just like uh with when teams play each other again they can now kind of have an idea of how the team plays and now they can adjust to it um and either that's going to even make it no more neck and neck or one's is going to capitalize on what could potentially be a, a shown weakness of a pattern that could have been picked up uh and just outright plow their way through <laughs> yeah um grand finals is going to be starting claim blitz barnacle and dime we've Ooh. seen this map quite a bit uh tonight and it's it's definitely a fun one uh pretty back and forth one of the flattest maps of the game somehow <laughs> despite was, it it, it doesn't feel like it but if it still <laughs> it still is i caught this game on stream and red sun had some very dominant control on this one so Ooh. we'll see if free glue gunner uh, can prevent Red Sun from getting set up to where they want to be. Uh, be uh, be very aware of Krim and those ink jets because Krim was picking off a lot of people with ink jet on this map. Yeah, I remember last time we saw Bam uh, kind of shark around that U in the middle, try and get some early picks with Azuka. This time they're the one that gets caught out. FM Candy able to get a nice pick on the back line, and Free Glue Gunner just putting their pedal on the gas or putting their foot on the gas here, to, uh, taking a push already to the enemy stack, having nine clams in their pocket, ready to go yet again. Not able to quite clean up the left side. FM Candy and Goose are not quite going to be able to do that. And Red Sun is going to stabilize a bit here with a pretty neutral game so far. Beam able to win that 2v1 there. Just uh, Free Glue Gunner could not get the get the win there. Beam able to maintain range, popping around, not getting hit, getting the two, just slowing that down a little bit. Uh, Blob here putting pressure with the inkjet of their own. And uh, Free Glue Gunner here now in, uh, well, they, they were 
in the face of Red Sun. But Red Sun uh, decided to say, nope, we're, we're going to get you out. But 5th Gen's going to wait here in the corner, uh, wait and see what Red Sun are going to do here as they paint up a bit and go forward. But um, <laughs> uh, just kind of waiting in the corner. It looks like two do go down, three, the inkjet's just out. Candy wants to try to stop this inkjet, able to stop it. That should be the end of that push for Red Sun, but they do manage to get a couple power clams in in the process. Yeah, definitely a pretty nice hold from Free Glue Gunner. They were able to get back in really quickly with just those two power clams down. Now the specials come out from Free Glue Gunner, but not quite uh, quick enough to uh, take control of that left side. They're going to get kind of caught out in that Zooka, and now they're on the back foot yet again. Goose just trying to keep their team on their feet here while 5th Gen trying to play disruption on the back side. It's going to slow Red Sun down just a tad. That might be enough for uh, Glue Gunner to hold down the right, and it seems like it is as they get back in, find a nice pick on the stack, and uh, begin to retake the middle of the map. Mm -hmm. Compared to the last game, uh, Free Glue Gunner is kind of being wary of the sides and are going in like they're not holding back they're making sure that they can keep up uh with red sun's fire because red sun um hasn't been able to keep control of the areas they want to uh like they did on the last game so free glue gunner has picked up on this and now they're putting up a uh, similar fire uh in control red sun it looks like they are winning more of the fights that are being taken here uh, um, in the 2v1s, 1v1s uh, kind of scenario, and we can see Krim here just trying to poke out one. Looks like uh, Candy does get a pick there on the left, and we're going to have a tag team up in the middle. Goose is going to follow up, and look at that. There is now an advantage on the side of Freak Glue Gunner, but not. Uh, but nico has got something to say about that. Yeah, they do manage to find the pick and uh, slow down uh, Glue Gunner for sure. That is going to enable... Uh, Free Glue Gunner to just hold the middle of the map here. Now nearly a 2v2 situation here. It's neither team able to find a clear opening. The clams are almost non-existent at this point. Uh, unless Free Glue Gunner is able to take control of the enemy stack, it, they're going to have a hard time getting in here. Red Sun has just been back so quickly repeatedly. They really need to enable Candy to get in. Candy's able to find one nice pick. The Zooka comes out. Not able to find anything just yet. The Zooka uh, not, not wall banging anyone there. Uh, it's going to... And not it's gonna just find dead air there and so free glue gunner gun goodness that is a name that's I'd say that five <laughs> times fast i I'm, i've learned to not I'm say not that five try. times fast at this point uh, <laughs> but uh bam slowing down the speed themselves with a nice pick on that carbon the jet's going to die on recall and red sun yet again just locking down this side of the map whenever one or two of them goes down they back up just to slow the t uh, slow down enough to give their team back some space bam on that zooka again cleaning up even more bam aka boopy just showing off the strength of mechanics right there of setting up the place putting suction bomb in between and trapping a player in between just landing those ink zooka shots just getting a lot of picks as the zap helping initiate red sun go forward here and uh, just uh, making sure that they can keep Glue Gunner back. And even though they've got the 60-point uh, lead here, Glue Gunner really has to make sure they find this opening again and take advantage of it uh, as much as possible to be able to get to this basket here. But Red Sun always seems to have somebody in the way that can pick two of them off, that can shut them down, even if they have a, uh, like a three-down advantage. Yeah, for real. Goose just walking around in mid and suddenly gets, like, home alone, trapped, bonked straight in the face by that Zuka. You just can't stand around without looking for even a split second in this game. Oh, my goodness. What looked like an opportunity for Glue Gunner to get in got, uh, gets shut down with three down in the... <laughs> and in just a fraction of a second blob doing everything they can to try and hold down the middle of the map. They are able to give their team some space here. They have one power clam online. Time is ticking. It's running out here. Just a few more seconds. Blob trying to make their way to the power clam, but it's not going to be enough. And Red Sun does hang on to that first game in a uh, just a bloodbath, a really stally bloodbath in the middle of the map. Mm -hmm. They had that one push, got those two clams in, and then both teams had like the fights in middle for the entire game. And uh, free glue gunner, that like I said, they had that one opening where they had three down. Um, I don't think it was quite a delayed white, but it was definitely a three down um, scenario on Red Sun. But there was just that one in the middle that was able to stop it. 
and uh, get a pick and weaken the other one enough to go down to the next one following up in behind from respawning and uh, it just took down that entire push uh, that was going to happen in the middle there. I think that was Nico who stayed alive uh, and managed to take the one down in mid and then landed a couple shots on the inkjet, but um, Free Glue Gunner wasn't able to go in off of that because one just stalled it long enough for the entirety of Red Sun to be back and in position and like, you're not going anywhere. That's our basket. You're not scoring today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just the kind of defensive lines that each team set up there was so strong. Uh, you can get to the stack, but you can't get any further than that. Uh, and that's that's kind of an interesting part of that map. But uh, moving on from that, we're going to have some potentially uh, snowball-y maps here with Zones Inkblot and TC Museum Delfoncino. Just be aware of that aggressive play coming out from either side because it can be easy to just uh, run out of time suddenly on either of these maps here. Uh, Inkblot Zones, I feel like people are not quite as big of fans of it as they were in Splat 2, which is uh, definitely valid. Depends on what you're running. I, I can see Free Gluner Gunner liking this one to set up candy uh, under the ledges um, to be able to pick off if Red Sun stays up on the ledge just to put um, pressure uh, from underneath. The Carbon can put a lot of pressure on the middle here. So I think Carbon will have a lot of fun, uh, but they can get uh, pushed back uh, without the proper support because Red Sun, as we can see, is able to find this Carbon, pick it off, and just continue to move up and create a wall. And then, uh, like you mentioned before, uh, Free Glue Gunners just has to try to find that way to help Candy get forward, their other front line get forward, uh, to put the same amount of pressure to keep in control Red Sun behind. I do like the pick of the pencil coming out here. I think that's going to supply the team with a lot of support. Goose on the bucket here as well is going to help around that tower in mid. That's that's what they uh, run straight for at the start of the game there. But one going down onto Glue Gunner is going to make it a little bit difficult for them to hold the zone here. We just see Red Sun swarming. Just angry bees moving in on that left side of the map, scaring away Glue Gunner. They do manage to jump out keeping themselves a bit on their feet there. They're going to be able to push back in relatively quickie, quickly, but uh, not if you get caught out on that flank over there. It's now in control Red Sun's favor here. They have so much paint on the zone, and they're stalling down into this left side, but into the blender, two members go. It's a three-down situation. Uh, three Glue Gunner is going to grab back that zone with winning that fight by the choke and start their first hold. They did have a little bit of a delay trying to take back that zone, but here's what Candy wanted. And it was just about there at the start too. But uh, like you said, and I quote, Red Sun going in like angry bees. And I love how the color matches that too. Uh, just goes in and they shut down Candy and we're going the corner, but they also got trapped in the corner of their own at the same time. We see it's reverse scenario now as three go down on the side of Free Glue Gunner. They're able to take that carbon out from underneath. The slosher goes down and one other, and now they are back in a position they want to be. Uh, but you can, you, two are back in this corner and you can see that they are playing it a bit different this time. So not all three of them go down in a similar spot. Yeah, Nico definitely playing a little bit further back, ensuring the Carbon just does not get into that corner before they get there. Instead, it's the strikes. The Carbon went over top mid. Candy is now behind them on their plat. It's now a pinch situation. Free Glue Gunner moving from multiple directions onto the zone. Red Sun needs to move away from the zone to do anything. FM Candy uh, is not able to find anything there. Red Sun, uh, what, what they just did was really, really smart. They moved all the way towards the sides just to keep themselves alive because they know uh, as long as they stay alive there, uh, they're going to be able to win the paint war on the zone, and that's exactly what they're doing here. The Jet is going to find a pick. That is going to stall enough to give the for, uh, give this game to Red Sun. Just such a really smart and aware defense. Uh, they know the Carbon's flanking behind them. They know that they have, uh, you know, a Charger on the other team looking for them to just be standing around in zone. They move all the way to the sides just to stay alive, keep themselves uh, painting the zone and that's going to win them that game. Mm -hmm. In this case, uh, Red Sun knew, like, the Carbon is behind them, yes, but they're taking away uh, the main painter, the, the ones that can control zone more. They're pushing them back first, and then when the Carbon moves in, they're all going to turn and look at the Carbon. So then that goes out first. Uh, that way, um, 
they they can still like maintain zone and then they can put majority uh, from what's potentially set up behind and not have to worry about the ones that are bunched up. So they're able to push one back, take like the 3v1 on the carbon and then go back in the 4v3 uh, now that they have the carbon picked off. And uh, <laughs> I could feel like uh, with uh, some of the fights that Candy was taking there, we could see they just couldn't get the carbon direct. And it, you, uh, I could kind of feel the, the pain through the screen um, <laughs> of just not being able to get that uh, that melee direct with the, with the carbon there because Candy had really good opportunities to be able to get uh, one picked off, but they weren't weak enough. Uh, or just didn't get the direct, but it was it was right there too. It's what they wanted, uh, but just couldn't land it. And the rest of Red Sun would have been able to follow up uh, as well, but the rest of the team was still stuck far back, so there was no other uh, poke or help for Candy to use to be able to get those picks, uh, even though it was proving useful. Uh, if yeah. it was like it could have been proven useful uh, if those picks were able to, or if. <laughs> words are failing me oh no i if it, I they were I completely able to get you. Picks, you, you know what i mean <laughs> I, i'm just gonna assume you guys all know what i mean but <laughs> but we're moving on to tower control museum now yeah uh this is where we are going to determine whether or not red sun can prove these grounds um are the grounds going to be proven tonight i'm not sure uh, but yeah, Red Sun just a single game away from taking the tournament here. Uh, after two very strong win, uh, wins, uh, Glue Gunners is going to need to be careful that this game does not run away from them. It can be easy to trickle into the tower given it starts so far from your plat. Uh, as they... Whoa! They, oh. they, they're doing... They, oh. Oh, this I is kind this. of... This is wild. <laughs> Holy... I love this, personally. Holy car... <laughs> this is this is funny. This is incredible. I love this. Uh, yeah, fifth gen Tetras is uh, definitely a weapon. They're very strong on. Now moving on to the enemy plot. I don't know if I've seen double Tetras all too much. Too many sharks uh, on the field at once. Candy on the Tetras as well. Trying to get behind Red Sun. Red Sun has been able to move into the middle of the map. They've taken out like free glue gunners entire team like twice, but still have not been able to move. The Tetras just keep rising like zombies and the tower is still sitting in the middle of the map. Interestingly, we do have the Brella for the inkjet on the other side, but uh, Red Sun making uh, use of their tools to just do the exact same things here. Goose tries to create an opening against the uh, impenetrable defense of Red Sun. There's one big concern about this one is that both Tetras and, and even the Brella, like the Brella wants to follow up on one of them and the Tetras kind of want to go in on each side uh, and get picks. But if they go in uh, alone and they don't land all of the shots, they don't have anything to follow up to guarantee that. So this is just going to kind of be a like literally a dive in splat fest for both of them. And the teammates aren't going to be able to like stay alive for long enough. But um, we see the bow able to maintain a bit of control there with the whale. But Red Sun able to just go up and they're capitalizing on the two. They're able to pick off one Tetras at a time. And you can see like two members uh, are shooting at one Tetras, whether it's in front or a side. Um, and just going to continuously pick them off. But with their quickness, they're able to get back into mid. But Red Sun now having the control, being able to push the tower. And uh, Free Glue Gunner is just going in one at a time at this point. Uh, just, just giving basically a feast to Red Sun. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is kind of wild because I see the vision. We, we saw the vision there briefly. The Tetras were going in. A Tetra stalls long enough to give another Tetra a jump. This is uh, what they're going to struggle at for sure, though. The defense. The defense aspect. Just being able to focus fire on the tower, especially with the lack of specials uh, to affect it. They're going to have a hard time really getting onto the tower here until it reaches the bend. They're able to then attack it from the high ground, which they do successfully, taking out two members of Red Sun. That's the third going down. It's now just, bam, on that left side stalling. They're going to give jump back into their team. The bow going to have a little bit of a hard time clearing them out quickly enough. And so Red Sun just going to end up stalling on this left side long enough to give their team a second wind. What those Tetras just did on plot, where they came forward, kind of dodged around each other and both looked in a similar area, are what they need to do to be able to get Red Sun off of this plat. They need to be able to crossfire, work around with each other with their mobility, have the Brella uh, move in to help kind of give a bit of extra support here. 
but they're just gonna keep basically playing like Tetras, so it's just gonna keep going forward on their side here and there as they keep jumping in forward to the entire team of Red Sun, so they're not gonna be able to hold them back if they can't go in and use uh, their aggression together at the same time, because yeah, this could be... Uh, okay, yep, that was bound to happen. Uh, there we go, swim number one for Dooley! Let's go! <laughs> Let's uh, give a round of applause for one Dooley in the water, perhaps uh, a a harbinger of future future Dooleys in the water to come. Um, but yeah, it's been like three minutes here that the tower has been sitting over on that right side of the map. Free Glue Runner is no closer to fully clearing it out than before. They don't have too much to really... Uh, fully affected. They don't have strikes. They don't have like rain. The best they can do is inkjet. And we just saw there, there's so much space to run around and the inkjet is not going to be enough on its own. We really need just a coordinated push here from Glue Gunner onto the tower and that seems like it, but being surviving, managing to stay alive, dance on the tower, here come jumps back in and that's going to be the checkpoint going down. The bow able to clean some members up and at long last, a full wipe and a opportunity for Free Glue Gunner to start their push. Mm -hmm. And this is something that came back up before, is that uh, In Control Red Sun is very good at winning the 1v1s of the Tetras, just approaching them one at a time, and then they'll they'll get these fights as well. You can see that happening as well. Like, it just happened there with the uh, Beam just riding to be able to get the, the tower up there. I'm pretty sure that was Beam. And just being able to watch the side, and even when a Tetris comes underneath, we saw 5th Gen just try to go underneath alone. One just quickly dropped down and shot it because it was called out and could just, you know, uh, just take that 1v1 because they, they knew it was there, approached it. Uh, at the ready, so we're down to the last five seconds, and uh, two of them are—they're gonna—they're gonna chill in the corner here and just, just, just vibe. Uh, my goodness, that is gonna be the tournament for Red Sun. They are going to win Proving Grounds 23. But oh, what a last game there! We're not gonna be able to see the statistics here, but please, I really want to see them on Twitter later because those are gonna be some big numbers. Who won the feeding competition, guys? Place your bets. Um, <laughs> well, I know what Splatfest team uh, Glue Gunners is going. Uh, what oh what a final game. But yeah, like even though like you can see, I have seen something like this actually work out uh, before. What do you want? Nice team. <laughs> Congratulations, Candy! Here is your trophy oh, Candy for death. takes home the victory here. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the second place only to Red Sun there. Uh, probably dying less <laughs> as a team than they did individually. Uh, but a really fun last game to solidify the tournament there. I mean, you know, when, when, you, when you face a team that you just, you try your best and you can't beat, and you just you just have a good time with the last one. It's it's a it's a good Friday night. Gotta have some fun to finish things off there. Absolutely, and and I mean I applaud for for going um like even going for that as like a last hurrah. And like I said, I was I have seen something like that work out before. Uh, it took majority of the game for it to work out before, but then they finally figured out. And I've seen uh, double tetras pinch together, go in towards together. Uh, but yeah, when you're fighting a team like Red Sun, they are going to read read you basically like a book when you're going in with uh, Tetris one at a time there. And uh, they will pick that comp entirely off. And you could see how patient they were and they were winning their fights uh, against both Dooleys there until they actually got caught out by both of them uh, with a special on the sidelines or the bows. Um, shots there trying to stall out. Um, but yeah, just very good well awareness. They were able to creep in. They knew the what to, what to do to basically go forward and hold that off. So something like that wasn't going to stop them. Yeah, just well played overall from Red Sun. We can just see how how <laughs> nothing is going to phase uh, Red Sun at this point. They've been through enough of these tournaments. They they know how to deal with these tetras and just not get singled out. We we saw throughout the tournament like they're just kind of bouncing off each other. Uh, and playing very well coordinated, and they do take home uh, the victory here. Uh, my goodness. That's quite the end to a tournament here. But yeah, uh, I need to ask before before we sign off here. We know we know Glue Gunners with the zombie Tetras. We know what Splatfest team they're going. What Splatfest team are you, Devi? 
I'm, I need uh, to find out so I can decide for myself. I, I've I've been discussing with with uh, Silly Cup Sunday crew here because usually we do that on Splatfest, and it was between it was between Ghost and Skeleton, and they just put a reference of Danny Phantom in, but then they called it <laughs> Devi Devi Phantom. So I think we might be going Ghost. <laughs> I like nice. I like that. I'm also stuck between those two, and it's it's like, oh man, I like skeletons, but Big Man in the ghost costume is way too cute. It's, it's so good. It's so good, and I'm I find it. Oh my god, it's so funny that everyone everyone was just doom posting like there's no Splatoween. How sad! And, and then on Friday the 13th, Nintendo's like, surprise, uh, but <laughs> which is kind of incredible. Uh, yeah, it's Friday the 13th. Uh, I think there's going to be one more Proving Grounds before Halloween. Uh, just the day Splatoween starts, if I am not mistaken. Oh. So, yeah. <laughs> Tune back in in two weeks for the next Proving Grounds, unless uh, something changes. It's been really fun commentating with you, Devi. Uh, oh, it's and always a blast. Happy season. early Splatoween. Ah, uh, yes. Happy early Splatoween. But of course, uh, Fusion, before we fully go away, uh, where where can the people in chat find you? Um, you can find me taking a nap. Um, everywhere. Um, no, you can find me at Apifusion underscore on Twitter. Uh, and yeah. Uh, where can they find you, Debbie? Uh, you can find me at Debbie Doovy on old Twitter and new Twitter. Uh, also YouTube, and then <laughs> at Devi underscore Doobie, uh on Twitch. And I also make uh, frequent appearances on the Squid School Silly Cop Sunday stream. So, that is where you can find me. <laughs> nice. Well, ha uh, have a great Friday the 13th, everybody, and uh, stay safe. Have a good night, everyone. <laughs>